criticism for its handling of the unrest. The Justice Department announced earlier this month that it would conduct a review of the St. Louis County Police Department as well as the Ferguson Police Department's response to the protest. Since the Ferguson protest, Senator Claire McCaskill and other lawmakers have questioned how the federal government goes about distributing more than $1 billion a year to police departments across the country in equipment and grants. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. The Dick Cheney Vice Presidential Library opens in a pitch-dark, sulfurous underground cave. And a seedless watermelon is coming to grips with the fact it'll never be able to have kids. This is the Onion Week in Review. Following a litany of tragedies occurring over the past year, a report this week from scientists at Princeton University confirmed that 90% of the Earth's atmosphere is now made up of thoughts and prayers. Researchers confirmed that with the rise of tragic events occurring all across the world each and every day, the Earth's atmosphere is 7% nitrogen, 3% oxygen, and 90 percent emotional pleas begging for everything to be okay. In other news, a new study finds nothing that will actually convince you to change your lifestyle, so just forget it. UMass Dartmouth is beginning to regret offering a course in applied domestic terrorism, and a sparrow thinks it might have caught the bird flu after puking seeds all morning. Stay tuned after the video for a brief tear in the fabric of space-time, offering a glimpse at next week's Onion Review. And keep checking theonion.com for more. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want. All you have to do is dial us up here toll-free at 855-453-free. That's 855-450-3733. We also have Skype. Skype on into the show. Our username here is lrn.fm. Just send a quick contact request first if you haven't done that yet. And at that point, it will be approved when we notice it, which will probably be within a segment or so. And then you can call at any time you want over Skype. The we tonight includes me, Ian. And Chris. Chris Cantwell is here from ChristopherCantwell.com. Uh, you've had an interesting week thus far, Chris, uh, an interesting night a couple of nights ago. We talked briefly on the air about you encountering a, a local neighbor here in the neighborhood of the LRN.FM studios, and it was not a friendly encounter. No, uh, it was not friendly at all. We can get into the details on that here in a little bit. Plus, uh, Rand Paul, there's some news about him. Uh, not that I want to talk about Rand Paul, but the news is that he's shifty. So uh, we'll, we'll share that with you. And in addition, apparently the United States government is going to somehow stop uh, Ebola with military agents, uh, with troops. I'm not I, sure how that's going to work. I'm not sure that's how you fight viruses. Yeah, I, I don't know if they're going to be shooting at the virus or what their plan is. Maybe they want to bomb the virus uh, to death. Maybe it'll be like Resident Evil, like you just have to kill everybody or something. Uh, that would likely be an approach they would make. So uh, we can share all of that with you here. Plus... Uh, Chris Cantwell is going to be sharing with us uh, some some interesting news, perhaps, about mushrooms and depression. And I, I presume you're talking about the psychedelic strain of mushrooms and not just, you know, yeah, mushrooms Yeah, not just the, the regular, store. like, pizza-topping mushrooms, but, the, you know, the magic mushrooms, the psilocybin. I find that very exciting news. But first, let's go into your phone calls and thoughts right out the gate. We've got Annie in Michigan. You're on Free Talk Live. Annie. Hi, Ian and Chris. This is Ann Arkeist from Michigan. Ann, okay. And yeah, I had a, a question about the non-aggression principle for you guys. Sure. My question is whether you believe the philosophy of non-aggression requires that a threat be immediate before self-defense is justified, and whether it is a moral necessity that the response of the defender be proportional to the threat. I'll I'll take that and I'll say no it doesn't need to be immediate because by that standard I mean if somebody were to say like hire an assassin to to come and kill you if he's uh you know he could take out a an ad in a newspaper and be like hey I'm hiring an assassin to kill Joe Blow and he could go hire the assassin and by the immediate threat standard you're not justified in doing anything until the assassin shows up at your house and you know in an age of long range weapons and stuff like that mm-hmm. doesn't that doesn't seem practical to me at all as to proportionality 
I, I wrote an article titled um, The Proportionality of Force Doctrine is Madness because the, the fact of the matter is is that if you're ever involved in any sort of violent confrontation, the whole entire point is to use uh, a, a greater or more effective level of force than your opponent is capable of using. That's how you win a fight, by using more violence than the other guy. If you use proportional force, that just means that you are going to punch each other senseless until neither one of you can fight any longer. So well, what I it, tend to agree, yeah. Uh... Yeah, I get, I get where you're coming I, uh, from there, I'm, I've read the article you're referring to. I, I, I'll admit I'm a, I'm a big Chris Cantwell fan. Well, I was you. wondering if, uh, if Ian maybe had a, a different take on it or whether you guys were in agreement on this subject. Um, I think when it comes to uh, self-defense, it makes sense that you should be able to use a level of defense or a level of uh, force that is is equal or just great enough to subdue the opponent. You know, if the person is uh, is going to strike you in the in the head uh, with their fist, it's probably inappropriate to blast their brains out on the the side of the pavement, unless, of course, you make the argument that the person who they're up against is a little child or something like that, uh, or somebody who's not able to defend themselves physically on a, a sort of a uh, an even keel with the with that person. I don't know if somebody attacking you with their fist necessarily means that it should be a death sentence for that person, but I, I, I think Chris is making a good point that you want to stop the fight from happening. You don't just want to keep trading uh, trading blows. Yeah, the thing, so I've made the case that, you know, look, if I have a, I open carry my gun, right? So if somebody comes and attacks me with their fists, that person's insane. They're they're crazy. They're a really dangerous person. If they would go and punch an armed man in the face who's openly carrying a weapon, and and the thing is that like you know if I'm carrying a gun and somebody's going to attack me with their bare hands, you know I'm I run the risk of that person gaining control of my weapon, and that's mm. a that's a threat to my life. That's not just the you know that's not just me getting a black eye or something like that. There's no reasonable expectation that a person who's going to punch you in the face is going to punch you in the face once and then stop. There's no reason that's to true. expect that. So when somebody's going to attack you, you run the risk of them, you know, overpowering you and then there's no limit to what they can do to you, you know, once that happens. Now, you know, generally speaking, if you have a, you know, if you have the means by which to blow someone's brains out, that's a really good reason to avoid getting a into a fist fight. But sure. if somebody's going to attack you and then, of course, I carry, you know, multiple levels of defense also. I carry pepper spray, too. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if somebody's, you know, threatening to punch me in the face, there's a good possibility I could pepper spray them first. Uh, but, you know, the, 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 the situation as I see it is you have you have the right to use whatever level of force is necessary to repel the threat to your safety. So to answer okay, your well, first question, and because, you you know, the first question was more about if there's there's a threat issued, not an imminent threat, not a somebody is physically there in front of you attacking you kind of threat, but a threat like somebody says something that they're going to hurt you or that they're going to kill you. Was that sort of your original question, Ann? Absolutely. I mean, take an edge case scenario. I mean, say you're, you're, a, you're a Dutch Jew in 1941 and you just heard that the Wehrmacht crossed the border of the Netherlands. I mean, do you have to wait in your house but until they're pointing the gun in your face and throwing your kids into a cattle car before you can consider mounting an effective defense? Yeah, I, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't think that that you would. I mean, if you know that there's somebody coming for you, uh, then that makes sense. But on the other hand, if it's somebody like, uh, you know, the, the guy who calls in every now and then from Arizona who makes who comes close to making a threat over the phone and he's, you know, half a world away. Uh, does it make sense to get in an airplane and then go after him and take him out before he can get to you? Uh, you know, there's it's a tough it's a tough well, realm right, to I try mean, to discern what's a legitimate threat and what's and, you know just tough talk on the internet. And I, and I'm not really talking about what's effective or what's not. I'm talking about the moral question of whether you would be justified in doing so from a moral standpoint, not whether it would make sense, uh, you know, financially or feasibly to do so. Well, I think I think you know Ian drew the example of say like uh, the you know gentleman who calls the radio show and you know spouts off at the mouth. He now, dances you know, around threats. He'll say things that sound like threats, but he won't use them the words that will make them a threat. Essentially, he'll say things like, I, "Well, I well sure, it would be nice if someone." One came in there and blasted you away or right. something like that and these you know this this is part of like what we were discussing the other day with the, with the guy who's being prosecuted for for threats on facebook is you know where does it cross that line from uh you know just tough talk on the internet to a an actual legitimate threat to your safety right. and and, right. and, and, and the thing is you know, there's there's a question of intent involved there right so is this person intending to make you fear for your life is this person just you know just 
feeling good about what they're saying, you know, and then there's your perception of that threat. If I actually believe that someone's a threat to my safety, in my book, I'm 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 justified in use doing what I have to do to uh, to repel that threat. And and what I have to do to repel that threat really, you know, there's there's no there's no upper or lower limit on that, right? Whatever I have to do to repel the threat to my safety is whatever I have to do to repel the threat to my safety. But generally speaking, you know, if it's just some guy, you know, spouting off, I'm a public figure, people threaten me all the time. I don't generally feel the need to go out and find them. What if it's not necessarily a credible threat, though? What if it's something you think, yeah, I don't think he's really going to act on the threat, but he did just say he was going to kill me. I mean, then if if I have no reasonable expectation that I'm in, that my safety is in jeopardy, then there's no reason for me to go use violence. So and thanks for the call threat, tonight, man. I, actually, hmm? Oh, thank you. All right, thanks. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. In the example he gave of, you know, like uh, uh, advancing troops that are coming to slaughter people or kidnap them and put them on death trains or whatever, I would think the best choice in that case would be to get the hell out rather than go out and try to kill them before they kill you odds are good you're going to be outnumbered and that's probably not going to work yeah out i mean you. in 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 certain cases that might be the more effective thing to do but then again you know how 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 far does a person run you know i mean at some point i i do believe people have to stand up against threats to their safety and that and you know your your life is in danger if people are coming and advancing towards you violently and there is it your life is in danger whether you run or not the toll free number is 855-450 free that's 855-450-3733 you can share your thoughts on what would you do in these situations we'd love to hear from you this is free talk live Angioprim can unclog blocked arteries and improve blood flow in all parts of your body. Angioprim is oral chelation. Easy, simple, liquid oral chelation. You take it with juice before breakfast and forget about it. Angioprim works fast, unlike old-fashioned chelation that takes hours. Just log on to angioprim.com. That's angioprim, A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M, angioprim.com. Angioprim users say they have more energy, more strength, more endurance. Increased circulation and blood flow will make all your body parts work better. Log on to angioprim.com. Angioprim.com to get more information on how you can get started and start feeling better, having fun, and doing more again. Lots more. Talk to a trained Angioprim consultant. Call Angioprim toll-free at 877-882-7221. That's 877-882-7221. Or log on for complete information. Angioprim.com. That's Angioprim.com. Find out how Angioprim can work for you. Get the facts about Angioprim at Angioprim.com. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Keenvention is coming up October 31st through November 2nd. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, attend social events like the costume party. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, James Robin Hood Cleveland, Rich Paul, and Free State Project President Carla Garrick will be keynoting. And we'll have all kinds of panels, including the new Cop Block panel and the new Movers panel hosted by the outlaw Josie Wales. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. 
So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm This is Free Talk Live. You are invited here to take control of the airwaves. The number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855 450 Three seven three three. We actually had a call right out the gate here tonight, which is always interesting because you know, you never know where it's going to take you. And a fan of yours called in, Chris Cantwell, to bring up the question about what about threats? How is what's an appropriate response? Because as liberty-minded folks, as you and I are, we tend to uh, subscribe to a particular uh, principle known as the non-aggression principle. And how would you define the non-aggression principle? I would define the non-aggression principle as non-initiation of force, but also, you know, if there's a threat of force, that's coercion. There's a, uh, fraud is involved in that, so you would not initi- you would not use uh, violence against something that was not a threat to your person or property, basically. Right. So uh, you will not aggress against other human beings in order to get your way. You, hopefully, right. you will use persuasion instead to get people to agree with you and do things that you want them to do. Uh, and it usually applies to the government because we know that the government is an agency that does use aggressive force. They do use the threat of violence and actual violence to achieve compliance. Uh, from their subjects. Exactly. And the last thing I want to do is behave like a government, so I would not behave that way myself, and I would discourage other people from behaving that way. But as usual, there are some gray areas to everything that seems so crisp and clear initially. I, I and- don't know. I, I really think that you can actually, like, I mean, I mean it, it seems gray to us because we have not been raised that way, mm-hmm. right? We're not we're not raised that way. So, I mean, there's there's a lot of room for discussion around some of the edges of it, I, I think. But I, I do think that, you know, if you, I, I think that there's logical answers to these things. Well, and the if non-aggression were, principle itself doesn't really answer the question of what do you do about someone who issues a threat against you, right? Because technically that's not aggression. It's just the threat of aggression. It's, it's coercion. It's the possibility of uh, of aggression, but it, it's it's at that coercion. Point, it's just coercion words. is aggression. Coercion well, is aggression. Fraud is aggression. Is it coercion for someone to simply say, "I'm going to hurt you," uh, you know, over the internet, or or is it you know coercion to say, "If you don't do something, I'm going to hurt you"? Well, I it mean, I had a, an incident where a guy told me the next time he saw me, he was going to f me up, right? Mm-hmm. And I and I believed that he was going to, which meant you know, and especially in New York, that's a problem because I can't carry my gun there, you know. Yeah. So I like went and confronted the guy. Um, was this the bear spray? Yeah, incident? this was the bear spray <laughs> incident. And uh, can you can you recount uh, what that is here in a moment? Let's talk about that because I think it's an interesting story. But okay. I also want to let our listeners know about ExpressCoin. If you've been thinking about getting Bitcoin, this amazing decentralized digital currency, not issued by any bank or government, uh, it's wonderful. And the price is down a little bit, so now might be a good time to buy. You can go to ExpressCoin.com. You do need to have a Bitcoin wallet first, and you can get one of those for free at Blockchain.com. But Express Coin.com is the best choice for buying Bitcoins, as well as Dogecoin, Litecoin, Blackcoin, and Darkcoin. It is an incredibly easy process, and they really care about customer service over there at ExpressCoin. So go and get your cryptocurrencies with a money order, check, or wire transfer, even cash deposit. Uh, go to ExpressCoin.com. You can even do it from your smartphone by downloading their app. And it's also available now in Canada, as well as the United States. ExpressCoin.com. Oh, and if you order up to $40 worth and use code FTL, you'll get that Bitcoin for no transfer fee. 
no fee whatsoever. They're doing it for free just because they want to get Bitcoins out there. They want to get you, they want you to have no excuse to not get some Bitcoins, or in this case, a fraction of a Bitcoin. And if you're ordering more than $40 worth, it's just a 3% fee. And that's also the best deal I've ever seen online for uh, buying Bitcoins. So go and check them out at expresscoin.com. And we'll talk about the bear spray incident here in a moment. But actually, we've got an international call on the line here from Skype. And this is coming from all the way over in Scotland, where they're gearing up for probably one of the most important votes of anyone's lifetime. Uh, Tommy is with us via Skype. Hello, Tommy. Ah, Ian. Hey, you're on with uh, Ian and Chris. Chris, Ian, how you doing? You'll take our lies, but you'll never take our freedom and our free talk lies. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for calling in, Tommy. It's right good to on. hear from you. Hey, so it's, what is it, like midnight 30 over there? What time is it right now? Spot on, mate. Six minutes premature, five minutes premature, 12.25. Yep. So we're uh, six and a half hours away from the polling stations open. Okay. And uh, it's open from 7 a.m. UK time to 12 p.m. Now, just for our listeners uh, who might not know what's going on at the polls, because normally people don't call from Scotland to talk about political races. I mean, I wouldn't want to hear anybody talking about a political race, even if they were calling from here in, in the United States. I just don't care about politicians. Oh, unless they're in New Hampshire, but, right, Ian? No, I don't even talk about that, really. I mean, we just talked did. About, we've talked about James Cleveland. Who do we talk about? What politician well, I, I brought up a lot of Scott Brown, but that was oh. me. Yeah, I don't know. I don't even know who that guy is. He's just another scumbag to me. Like, to me, politician names are all interchangeable, and they're all just a bunch of trash. Yeah, but uh, the, it, what's going on in Scotland, though, now that's really something. Right. This has nothing to do with politics, really. This is about independence, or at the very least, secession. Uh, the idea is that Scotland is looking—there's a proposal— uh, to have the the idea of Scotland leave the idea of the United Kingdom. Uh, is that kind of in a nutshell what's going on today when the polls open? Yeah, if, if you analyze the founding fathers of the United States of America were Scots, you know, and uh, Scotland, this little country of five million people, uh, surrounded by sea, but is, is locked uh, with another country called England, and that forms with another couple of countries, Northern Ireland and Wales, uh, as part of the United Kingdom or Great Britain. Over in your country, you'll just know it as England because that's how insignificant Scotland is treated mm. by our British paymasters. We're just a little insignificance. But you see, Scotland is very asset rich, apart from the people being the most creative people in God's green earth, from making the, the tires that we drive around our cars, from the TV to penicillin. And as I stated, the founding fathers of the United States of America, the, the, the majority uh, were Scots. And so what I give to you is Scotland has been living under tyranny mm. for over 300 years. And tomorrow we are about to historically, God willing, vote yes to be free from the rule of Westminster in London. Now, this parliament in Westminster is ridden with paedophiles. It is corrupt, and we have had corrupt politicians who have presided over the banking collapse in the UK. And these chutzpah-loving sons of Satan are turning round to Scotland and saying to us, you cannot run your own economy when it's these same fools who have helped destroy not only Scottish economy, but the British economy by allowing their friends and their bankers to run free and rampant with their voodoo economics. Now, Tommy, are so you still driving a cab out there? Well, see, what has happened, I lost my licence due to uh, me getting a soccer player uh, free from his illegal contract with a team called Sevco, formerly known as the Glasgow Rangers. So I'm in a bit of a hiding and under death threats myself. I would like but, to know what the word on the street is. I mean, there's obviously polls. I'll stay on hold. See, I want to. Yeah, hang on. I want to bring you back here in a moment, Tommy. You, this guy's for real. I mean, he's got. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's really in. Uh, you can tell by the accent. Uh, he's not putting us on. And we've had Tommy call into the show over the years and. Uh, Kind of give us the perspective from across the pond. And I want to find out what he's hearing. What are the people on the street saying about independence? We'll come back with more. It's Free Talk Live. 
September is National Preparedness Month, so make it a September to remember by getting your emergency food supply from the Freeze Dry Guy. On sale this month, our 2014 Stew Butter and Potatoes Unit. You'll get one number 10 can each of high quality Mountain House Chicken Stew, vegetable stew with beef, pilot crackers, plus the highest quality dehydrated ABC stew, butter and potatoes for a total of 160 one half cup servings. Retail value $161.41, but not this month. The Freeze Dry Guy offers the 2014 Stew Butter and Potatoes Unit for only $123. 93 save over $37 plenty of protein veggies carbs for energy and tasty hearty storable food with a shelf life of over 25 years call 866-404-3663 free shipping to the lower 48 states click freezedryguy.com or call 866-404-3663 that's freezedryguy.com hurry the national preparedness month sale and september 30th from the freeze dry guy the finest freeze dried and dehydrated foods available anywhere for long-term storage Andrew Michael Jones is a liberty-loving activist and participant in the Free State Project. He's also been accused of being one of the administrators of the infamous Silk Road anonymous black marketplace. Andrew is facing a federal trial for multiple crimes with no victim. Whether or not he's the Silk Road administrator named Inigo, he has not been accused of harming anyone. In fact, the Silk Road is actually an amazing advancement that has reduced the overall harm of the black market to both customers and drug sellers. Whether or not he did it, Andrew, like alleged Silk Road founder Ross Ulbricht, deserves the support of people who love liberty. Visit DrewsDefense.org to learn more and contribute to his defense. You can donate via PayPal or in Bitcoin, as I did. That's DrewsDefense.org. Drew's family does not have much, and his parents have put up their home and both retirement incomes to secure a $1 million bond on Andrew. He's currently on 24-7 house arrest and is prohibited from touching any device that could connect to the Internet. Please contribute to his defense fund via DrewsDefense.org. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. NASA's recent discovery of water on Mercury has led to speculation among scientists that the planet could potentially sustain an intergalactic space prison housing the universe's worst criminals. Scientists believe that organic compounds found on the planet's surface could be useful for creating an off-world space Australia, where strength is the only law. However, they caution it is too early to say whether or not fights among the space jail's prisoners would be broadcast here on Earth for the entertainment of wealthy gamblers. But NASA's lead researchers do say that Mercury's ability to support human life raises important questions about who the prison guards would be. Perhaps the guards themselves would be space mercenaries, or maybe we'd just use robots. The robots would have guns for hands. Well, obviously. Critics inside NASA caution against funneling too many resources into the Mercury project when it would be so much cooler to build a prison on the moon ruled by clones of the prisoners themselves. Researchers encourage the public to read their findings, which have been released in the form of a graphic novel titled The Mercury Cipher. This is the Onion News Network. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything that you want. We've actually got somebody on the line from Scotland. He is uh, Tommy. We're going to get back to him here in just a moment to give us an update on what it's like. What's going on over there right now? I mean, it's, yeah, sure, we can sit here and read news articles, but we've actually got somebody who's there. So we'll get into that here. There's a, a vote coming up that the polls will be opening in a matter of hours over in uh, in the UK and Scotland, uh, where people will be able to cast their vote on whether or not Scotland should be able to separate 
from the United Kingdom, which I think is a wonderful uh, concept. I hope that it works out. Uh, I don't want to get my hopes up too, too much, but the polls are showing it's allegedly going to be a close race, if you believe polls, which before an election... A lot of times those things aren't really necessarily the most accurate. We can continue that discussion and also want to let you know about ProXPN. If you care about online privacy, check them out at proxpn.com slash FTL. ProXPN is a global virtual private network that encrypts your online data, meaning that before whatever it is you're doing online gets to your internet service provider, it is encrypted, meaning that your ISP will not know what you're doing, maybe whatever you're searching for, the websites you're visiting. Right now, they're probably logging all that information and keeping those logs, in some cases, as long as five years. So you can put a stop to that snooping by going to proxpn.com slash FTL. Download their software. It's available for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, as well as Android. Plus, Linux users, you can also use ProXPN. Those setups a little bit different, uh, though very simple. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Use promo code FTL50, and you'll get 50% off the price of an annual account. Now, again, I said you can just go and start for free, but the annual account will hook you up with what's called the premium level account, give you unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can access. You can also privately torrent with the, uh, with the premium account and get past regionally blocked websites. Now, maybe 50% off just isn't good enough for you. Uh, by the way, that breaks the price down to about 5 bucks a month. You want an even deeper discount, pay with Bitcoin, and you'll get 62% off of the price of the annual account. Code for Bitcoin is FTLBTC, like Bitcoin, FTL, like Free Talk Live, BTC. And you get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. And ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits at all. So use codes FTL50 or FTLBTC and get yourself a great discount on privacy that is priceless. As we go back to Tommy, he is in Glasgow. Tommy, you're back on Free Talk Live with Ian and Chris. Just to put it into the, the true picture for all your wonderful listeners Scotland today or tomorrow for you guys this will be if we vote yes our independence day you had it in 1776 July 4th ours could be the 18th of September 2014 and we could get our independence years after many people fought and died you know the massacre at Culloden when the Jacobite uprising was cruelly crushed. Uh, you know, the Longshanks rule of England. You know, now, the, the campaign that has happened just now has been a true beacon for democracy. The way it has been conducted on both sides, yes and no, there has been a lot of negativity from the no side. And the no side to keep the union together has been backed by the media, the BBC, which mm. has told lies. Well, of course, the, the UK lies. doesn't want to lose any tax base. Oh, yeah, and the BBC's government run, right? So yes, they're... it did. And, and the main resource is the North Sea oil. Now, Scotland has got a tremendous uh, resource, which is this oil. The, the oil is Brent Sweet Crude, is the champagne. Someone today... Uh, I do a campaign. I've been doing campaigning myself, hmm. but something they say that the, 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 it's the champagne of oil, the Brent sweet crude. And they said got similar untapped. things about Libya, I believe, too. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, we've got untapped resources. But what has happened? There's 40 food banks surrounding the five miles where I sit in Glasgow. People are starving and under tremendous poverty. Yet most of this oil revenue is taken down in London. And the whole of London and the whole uh, economy is London-centric. So there's many regions of England where Manchester, the Beatles in Liverpool and, and all places where they're suffering. And even places in Catalonia where they're the powerhouse for Spain and they're wanting to become free from Spain. Where my mother came from in Ireland, they're looking to all the people in these places are looking and saying... Please, Scotland, vote yes. Yeah, a lot of, right, you're talking about Catalonia in Spain. Uh, they are talking about secession. There's a very strong secessionist movement in Catalonia. Now, you know, I don't care what their political motivations are. I know in Catalonia they want to be so, more socialist than Spain. So, you know, that's what that's their motivation for seceding. It's about control. It's yeah, about I, control of Yeah, it's about own, local control. Uh, destiny, more autonomy. Yes, because Scotland, people are making decisions in England. It's like... United States of America having the decisions made by Mexico or Canada. Well, and it's also, right. I mean, it doesn't make sense that the U.S. is even still together. And I hope that 
the Scottish secession. I hope it passes, and I hope that we'll see Catalonia secede, and then we'll see Quebec uh, leave Canada, and New New Hampshire leave the United States, Texas, Vermont. Yeah. Get, the more secession, the better. I don't care what the political motivations are. But what are you hearing uh, from people, Tommy? I mean, if, obviously, there's the statement I saw online that they some people are saying that poor people are going to vote to secede, rich people are going to vote to stay. I don't know if there's anything to that. <laughs> Yes, oh, there is. There is tremendous in that because I've been doing my own campaign for the last couple of months. I've mm -hmm. been sitting here uh, with my with my computer, picking numbers out the directory and just phoning people. Mm -hmm. And I phoned all over Scotland, Glasgow, Edinburgh, Aberdeen, and yes, the well-to-do people. A lot of them, obviously, they're worried because the fear tactics have been put there that they think they're going to lose their wealth. Whereas people like myself, who have not got a pot to pee in, and we're saying, well, it can't get any worse than what we've already got. There's a lot of poverty. There's been a recession on in Glasgow for over 30 years. There's a lot of poverty, and people are starving. Children are going through, you know, and, and our pensioners, the oldest people in society, have to choose each winter with the cold winters of having to either eat some food or heat themselves, mm. and 50,000 pensioners die each year. Wow, and what Scottish government, Scottish government is saying to the people, well, let us get a chance to help uh, have more control of our own destiny, get more control of the oil, so as more of our people will benefit, instead of just a few who are benefiting. Uh, and you don't have to persuade me, Tommy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're not, you're, you're, you're not trying to convince no, us that understand. Scotland well, should secede. Uh, I think but Chris we has wanna, a question. We wanna, I want to I wanna know a couple things about this, though. I mean, you're telling us about the situation that's been going on there, and I understand that, and don't get me wrong, it's important, that's why you have this vote going on, and I and I, and I I really, I, I do wish you guys all the best, but it, I, there's I, a couple I, of things I, I think that we want to get, I think there's a couple of things we want to get out for the show for for our audience, like what sort of the implications here are. One thing that I'm interested in, for first things first, I think it would be great um, because if 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 you pulled it off, this would be a relatively peaceful secession, right? Mm -hmm. And we here in New Hampshire, I mean, there's a secessionist movement here in New Hampshire, and one of the things that we always run into with that here is that there's going to be a civil war if you do that, because mm -hmm. of course last They're time roll in troops. states tried to secede from the Union in the United States, that's exactly what happened, and I've made that argument argument myself before that like look these people are not going to go away peacefully i think it would be um sort of historic i don't know if there's uh other recent examples of countries like separating peacefully but this is being done by a, a referendum if i understand it right and and it's been done by people like myself i'm sitting here on the computer last weekend it was thirty five thousand. today i went into george square the center of glasgow soon to be known as freedom square and this is a grassroots movement similar to what happened in the arab spring where the people have got together in social media and people are going out as i say i've sat here phoned thousands of people and because i used to be a salesman and i'm passionate about it i've been converting people saying are you undecided mm -hmm. tell me what you're undecided about and then getting them to say yes you know what this this makes sense and 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 this is what's been happening all over the place and this if god willing if this is what we win uh, then yeah the succession that would happen the more autonomy then this would be a beacon because then what, what it would show you is that people power can take on the might of the british empire the british empire it is finished mm. and then people will see that the, the oldest the newest democracy well the democracy uh, the, the word dem dem democracy stems from the ancient greece but the the recent democracies britain being the oldest if it happens that a part of britain succeeds then everybody and anybody can do it yeah so the beacon will be huge. lit i so think you're right about rise that rise up rise up people rise up new hampshire i love and it i love it democracy. thank claim you uh, i'm not a fan of democracy it. but uh, i do like Love the idea it. of secession Love and it. i thank you tommy for the call tonight good luck and give us a call tomorrow if you get a chance give us a recap of, well, uh, of what happened really hopefully to hear. uh hopefully you'll be calling us a little bit more free tomorrow night thanks tommy good luck out there more coming up here on free talk live a world without breast cancer is a world with more birthdays. And by signing up for the Making Strides Against Breast Cancer Walk, you will help us get there faster. Because you're helping the American Cancer Society make the greatest impact and save more lives in more communities through groundbreaking research and access to screenings for women who need them. Walk in Making Strides Against Breast Cancer because you can help us finish the fight. Sign up today at makingstrideswalk.org. These days, when I'm in a relationship, I feel like I'm alone. Like there's no one behind the mask. No voice on the other end of the line. 
Are you looking for a car insurance policy totally devoted to you? At GEICO.com, you'll find a sympathetic ear, a shoulder to cry on, butterfly kisses, and easy ways to pay your bill and manage your policy. We're waiting with bated breath to help you save money and talk about your feelings. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you hundreds on car insurance. Have you heard? Proactive Plus is faster and better than ever. Stay tuned for a million bottle giveaway and you'll also receive free shipping. Do you have troubled skin? Acne? Well, we have great news. With Proactive Plus, your acne can heal and you can help prevent new breakouts from happening. Don't miss this limited time offer. Give us a call at 800-538-5252 because we're going to let a million people try Proactive Plus risk-free and get two free gifts and also receive free shipping when you call right now. You heard it. This offer won't last long. So call Proactive Plus now and you'll receive a 60-day risk-free trial of Proactive Plus, two free extras, and free shipping. Call 800-538-5252. This is our exclusive radio offer, never on TV. Get your risk-free 60-day trial of Proactive Plus with free shipping. That's right, free shipping. Don't wait. Call 800-538-5252. That's 800-538-5252. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Hey, it's Free Talk Live. Secession night. Uh, Actually, tomorrow... It's tomorrow right now over in Scotland, and in a few hours, uh, several hours, their polls are going to open, and people will be voting on leaving the United Kingdom, which I think is very exciting. And as both uh, Chris Cantwell here in the studio and Tommy in Glasgow pointed out, if this is successful, and I sure hope it is, I don't want to get my hopes up too much about it, but if it is successful, then that'll be a huge Uh, indicator for the rest of the world. If, indeed, the United Kingdom doesn't roll in with troops or nuke Scotland... And I don't think uh, there's any threat of that, even, by the way. I think even the Queen was kind of like, hey, you know... they, They never... I don't believe that there's any threat of violence on the table. If they decide to secede, they decide to secede. Well, there are... I know at least that's the concern over here. Whenever we talk about secession, inevitably somebody is going to have the concern that they're gonna roll in tanks! Uh, well, or and, they're going to nuke New Hampshire. And you will and you frequently will hear threats when people say things like, that was decided during the Civil War. Mm, as far yes. as I'm concerned, that's a threat of violence. That's true. And Barack Obama, I think that was essentially his response. I don't know if you remember in yep. 2012 when there were those petitions that came out, those online petitions where Texas got like over 100,000 signatures. 
uh, to secede, and there was 20 other states or something that also had petitions to secede from the United States. And the Texas one got enough signatures to where the the White House issued a response, and that was essentially their response: was like, yeah. "We decided this in the 1800s." And so maybe there is a threat of force there, but I think that uh, to me it's not really a non-issue. I'm not. I don't think that that should be. I don't think the fear about what might happen should prevent people from moving ahead with plans to secede. It's, I don't think so either. Yeah. I mean, it's arguable that the United Kingdom is as violent of a government, or darn close to as violent uh, of a government, and as as close to interventionist as the U.S. is. Uh, they're they're right up there, you know. They they usually go on the same bombing runs together, and they in, invade the same countries together. So. Yeah, easy top five. If the UK uh, looks at this, if this vote is successful in the, in Scotland, and the UK just lets it happen, then I think that's an indicator that that's what would happen in the United States as well. Despite the tough talk about how this was decided back in the, you know the 1800s in the US. I don't think that they would roll in tanks. Have you here. have you followed the story over there at all? Do you know if Scotland would remain part of the European Union if it seceded? Ooh, that's an excellent question. I don't have the answer right. to that. Maybe I'll maybe I'll try to search for that during the next break. Or I would imagine they would idea. have to. I would imagine they'd have to join, right? Like they wouldn't be part of it by default. I, I wouldn't think. Well, the, the thing that I did read was that the Queen of England would still be like the Queen of Scotland in the. At least in the interim, they're mm. not trying to. They they want to overthrow. They want to get rid of the parliament. Okay, but not necessarily like the Queen of England. Like the Queen of England, uh, to my understanding, is actually like looked on kind of highly um, within Scotland from the little Strange. bit that I read about it. Yeah, um, but of course they'd have. You know, the the Queen of England is uh, you know above politics is the way that it's supposed to work. She's not supposed to be. You know, they'd have their own parliament and their own prime minister or whatever that sort of thing. So share your thoughts here with us. The toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty three. Little uh, story from Reuters on today's vote. Scottish nationalist leader Alex Salmon implored Scots to grasp the opportunity of a lifetime to secure independence in a vote on Thursday that could break the United Kingdom apart. He said, quote, This is our opportunity of a lifetime, and we must seize it with both hands. In my estimation, this has been the greatest campaign in Scottish democratic history, though he added that the British establishment had thrown the kitchen sink at the independence campaign. He derided an offer of more powers from British leaders as a tepid offer of next to nothing, but said he would accept the result if he lost the independence vote. Scotland's future must be in Scotland's hands, he told hundreds of supporters waving the blue on white, or rather white on blue, Scottish flag, who chanted, yes, we can. I am just uh, I just picked up an article in Euractive.com, and it says it's uh, exclusive. It says, members of the European Parliament could block an independent Scotland's EU membership if it insists on keeping currency and border treaty op- um Opt-outs negotiated by the UK sources in two of the largest political groups in Brussels. Good, let them block so. it. Let them block it. There's been talk about uh, Bitcoin being the national currency of, of Sounds free Sounds like Scotland. a plan. I don't know if it's any serious talk, but uh, I think there have been some opinion pieces about it online. Like, could this happen? You know, they're, they're not going to have their own currency right out the gate. And is it possible Bitcoin or some sort of cryptocurrency could be that option for them? Well, they can trade know. in whatever they see fit. Why Why have an official currency at all? Right, right. Yeah. Why go through the same processes of creating your own central bank and make the same mistakes that all these other countries have made? There certainly are plenty of countries that use the U.S. greenback. I mean, so there's a lot of places that don't have central banks, right. from what I understand. They just are the victims of other central banks. Right. I mean, not that that's ideal, but uh, you know, using Bitcoin could be a solution. So I'm eyeing this interest with uh, quite a gr- uh, great bit of interest. I hope that it works out for them, and I hope that we see more of this if, from I understand the California proposal to break up California into six different states did not receive the number of, uh, well, I guess it it's not that they received, they didn't receive the number of signatures. They got the number of signatures from what I understand, but the uh, they were disqualified. Enough of them were disqualified or something uh. like that. Yeah, I, please correct me if I'm wrong in that. If you're out in California, you know the latest on that situation. This is just what I heard from Daryl, uh, Daryl W. Perry, our Friday night co-host. Uh, so uh, it's it's a shame. I would have loved to have seen that one succeed as well, uh, and that is to succeed in seceding. <laughs> uh, but I, in that case, it, they wouldn't be seceding from the United States. They would just be breaking up California into multiple different states, and then they would have to be accepted into the United States or approved by the U.S. Congress, which is a very difficult path 
even if they were to have succeeded uh, with that vote in California, it wouldn't have necessarily have meant down the line that it would have actually occurred. Yeah, but it would have been a. I think it would have been a positive thing in any case because it you know more decentralizes the political authority, and of course the government of California is I think second only to New York in terms mm. of tyranny, and maybe some of those areas could get freed up a little bit. Absolutely true. So I don't know what else is working in the in the land of secession in the United States. I think it's kind of the same old story where Vermont got a decent movement, New Hampshire kind of a smaller uh, independence movement, Texas, there's isn't the Republic of Texas down there, I think. Uh, there was actually news headlines out of the South. I think there are billboards in Florida and maybe Georgia. I'm not sure where else. But there's a, the, the League of the South is, I believe, what they call themselves. They've mm-hmm. been buying billboards with the words secede and bold across them. Uh, down in the south, which I think is interesting. Yeah, so, absolutely. It's a cool campaign. I'd but, like I'd like for the Vermont secessionists to uh, to succeed in seceding because uh, sure. that would get rid of Bernie Sanders, and uh, I think that that would be a wonderful <laughs> thing for the United States Senate. <laughs> well, Bernie Sanders, at least you know, at least he's honest. You know, he'll tell you straight up he's a socialist, right? I mean, you got to give him credit for that. Well, is there such a thing as an honest socialist? I don't. I don't know. I mean, he might be incredibly <laughs> stupid and also honest, but he couldn't possibly like have intellect and well i think it, i think it would be very interesting to see vermont secede and new hampshire secede because it would become a study in contrast right and vermont would likely go in more of a lefty kind of direction with universal health care where hopefully new hampshire would go go in a more uh, independent uh, direction a more freedom oriented uh, direction and it would be an interesting contrast to, to look at one state and how it works out versus the other state Uh, Either way, I support it. I don't care what your motivations are for wanting to secede. I don't care if it's because you want to build your own little tyranny or you want to have uh, total freedom. I think that the more independence people can have politically from centralized governments, the better off everyone in the entire world will be. Generally speaking, I would agree with you, but I I wouldn't say that I don't care because, I mean, that's obviously – look, I mean, we have had certain instances in the United States where a state government does something absolutely awful and then we can go to federal courts and get that overturned. And That's true. Are, you know, now I don't think that the risks outweigh the benefits. Yeah, of I'm not that, willing you know? to. I'm not willing to hold on to the feds in the hopes right. that they're going to do something good in the future. Right, because because for all the terrible things that New York has done, I mean, you'd have an all-out complete gun ban in New York if not mm-hmm. for the federal government. I think, and and uh, you know, look, but at the same time, New York hasn't, you know, on its own gone in. But fine, let on, him, let them. New do York that. hasn't on its own on its own gone in and invaded another country either so you know if the true federal government is outwaging the wars anything i can do to get away from that the better but ultimately if new york goes ahead and bans all the guns if they secede and then ban all the guns it's just going to mean more people are going to leave new york right and then at least hopefully if new york lets them right what if new york had then its own (laughs) if new york then had its own like immigration controls it would just be you know you know especially you know you're on long island it's not you know exactly uh it's not you can't just walk away right <laughs> there's a lot of a lot of water there well get out now while you still can new yorkers um, absolutely before they put up the wall to keep you in uh you can come of course to new hampshire if you love freedom that is if you don't love freedom you don't love liberty then please don't come to new hampshire go to florida or stay in new york uh but uh, if you do love the ideas of liberty then you really need to ask yourself why you're still in new york or California, or Illinois, or wherever it is you are where you feel like you're being oppressed. Because you can be more free in New Hampshire. Uh, you can check out the Free State Project at freestateproject.org. Come on up for Keenvention. Uh, Keenvention is happening in about six weeks. I would say five or six weeks away. It's going to be coming up fast. Keenvention's Keen, a blast. Yeah, keenvention.info. And that's where you can go to get your tickets. It's October 31st through November 2nd. We'll come back with more of your thoughts You can take control of the airwaves here at Free Talk Live. 855-450-FREE is the number. Coming up, mushrooms could be good for you. It's Free Talk Live. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. 
DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Tollhouse Morsels, helping you create special moments and memories your family will cherish forever. Visit us at tollhouse.com. You may bake for birthdays and holidays, but why stop there? Sweeten up the rest of the year by designating monthly dessert days. Treat your family to one of their favorites or surprise them with something new. Either way, you'll create a tradition everyone will love. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Wednesday, September 17th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,236, silver opened at $18.65, and Bitcoin is trading around $457.23. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Support for Liberty Beat comes from the Michael Cargill for Austin City Council District 1 campaign. Vote Michael Cargill to get the cars moving. Learn more or sign up to volunteer at CargillForTexas.com. Political advertisement paid for by the Michael Cargill for Austin City Council District 1 campaign. In the news, New Zealand Prime Minister John Key has denied the nation was conducting mass surveillance on its citizens, despite documents from whistleblower Edward Snowden that indicate otherwise. Key's comments were in response to a report from The Intercept, which references a New Zealand program known as Spear Gun, run by the Government Communication Security Bureau Signals Intelligence Agency. The report states the government of New Zealand used a covert cybersecurity program to launch a domestic mass surveillance program aimed at reading emails, texts, and internet traffic. On Monday, WikiLeaks published documents and files related to German surveillance technology company Finn Fischer. The majority of the documents had been released by a hacker in August, but the WikiLeaks spy files include a list of the company's customers as well as copies of the spyware itself. WikiLeaks spokesman Julian Assange stated the release of the software itself is an effort to help the tech community build tools to protect people from the surveillance. The ACLU of Massachusetts has partnered with local librarians to give patrons the opportunity to opt out of pervasive surveillance. According to information released by the Electronic Frontier Foundation, area librarians have been teaching and taking workshops on how freedom of speech and the right to privacy are compromised by the surveillance of online and digital communications, and what new privacy-protecting services they can offer patrons to shield them from unwanted spying of their library activity. In 2007, a group of librarians was honored by the ACLU for standing up to privacy intrusions by the Patriot Act. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Cabo Bob's, Southwestern-style burritos, now with two locations in Austin, 500 East Ben White Boulevard and 2828 Rio Grande Boulevard. Find them online, CaboBobs.com. And support comes from Sovereign Living, a podcast, blog, and reality show about what it takes to live a voluntary and natural life. Check out the blog at SovereignLiving.com and watch episode one of the soon-to-be-released reality show at SovereignLiving.tv. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, September 17th, 2014. Check out the website at TheLibertyBeat.com. And like us on Facebook at Facebook.com, The Liberty Beat. The sentencing hearing for journalist Barrett Brown will be continued until November or December 2014 because of scheduling conflicts. Government attorneys requested a new hearing for either November 17th or 18th or any day during the weeks of November 24th, December 1st, or December 8th of 2014. 
September 12th marked the two-year incarceration of Brown for charges of assisting the person who hacked private intelligence firm Stratfor and obstructing the execution of a search warrant. Coinbase, a company that offers merchant Bitcoin processing in addition to personal Bitcoin wallets, is now available in 14 countries. The United States has been their fastest growing market due to integration with the U.S. banking system, allowing Americans to easily buy and sell Bitcoin online. The company reports they are now beta testing integration with European bank accounts in major countries like Italy, Spain, France, Belgium, and the Netherlands, among others. The United Way Worldwide is now accepting Bitcoin for donations. As the world's largest privately held nonprofit, this sets the tone for a growing trend toward cryptocurrency across the globe. According to Coinbase, the global organization has more than 2.8 million volunteers, 9.7 million donors, and raises over $5 billion each year. Support for Liberty Beat comes from the Crypto Show, Bitcoin, Anarchy, and Talk. Tune in tonight, Wednesday, September 17th, from 8 to 10 Central Time, as the Crypto Show interviews Stephen McCaskill of Amagi Metals and later Ben Swan. Listen live tonight, 8 to 10, on 90.1 FM in Austin or TXLR.net. And today's edition of the Liberty Beat is brought to you by Brave New Books, your source for all things Bitcoin. Now hosting a Bitcoin ATM, located in Austin, Texas, 1904 Guadalupe Street, or online, bravenewbookstore.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, September 17, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Jack Daniels announced today its plan to start marketing directly to children, adding, quote, why not? Executives for the whiskey company told reporters that they've already slated dozens of television spots showing 10-year-old children drinking tumblers of Jack and Coke in playgrounds and that the company was planning on, quote, just seeing how it all played out. Every year, Jack Daniels sells millions of dollars of great American whiskey to men and women all over the world. So for our next ad campaign, we basically just thought, hey, why not just start marketing this stuff straight to 10-year-olds? I mean, if they catch us, they catch us, but we'll see how far it goes, and hopefully we can sell some alcohol along the way. Sure, some parents' groups could get upset, especially if we go with our idea of moms serving their kids cranberry jack at snack time. But In other news, a doomed rabbit will teach an eight-year-old a lesson about responsibility, and a torrent of soap issues from a wildly unexpected part of the dispenser. Well, that was it. It's all downhill from here, bud. For more, visit theonion.com. This is the Onion News Network. It's Free Talk Live. You are invited here to take control of the airwaves. All you have to do is dial in toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online at freetalklive.com. Coming up, uh, mushrooms. They might actually help you, the psychedelic type, with depression. Chris Cantwell has the story. We'll get into that. Plus, Chris, you were going to tell us the bear spray story. We never got to that last hour uh, because we ended up talking about secession with Tommy in Glasgow as uh, Scotland is set to vote today. And voter turnout is expected to be very high in this particular election because unlike most elections where you're just picking between scumbag politicians, people actually care about uh, voting for independence. And so it's expected that a lot of people are going to be coming out to the polls in Scotland today to vote for possible independence from the United Kingdom. We'll be keeping an eye on that and have you uh, the details when we come back on the air uh, on Thursday night. But we still have a, a couple hours here where you may comment on whatever's on your mind. 855-453 is the toll-free number. So just kind of let's bring the conversation back. Chris Cantwell, uh, we had a call right out the gate in the first hour. He was asking about threats and you right. know what's the appropriate response to threats. What's the, you know, the libertarian response to threats? And, of course, not everybody agrees on this. Uh, but generally, I think the perspective of those of us in the studio was that if you feel like you are an imminent threat, Im- imminent danger from someone who's threatening you, that you you probably are morally justified in taking some sort of an action. Now, I'm not saying I would necessarily do it. Uh, I think that uh, I think it's a real gray area. And for me, 
you know, the, the example was given of uh, Jewish people, you know, having the Nazis come uh, coming after them. You know, if, if they knew that the soldiers were coming their way, would they be in uh, would they be justified in fighting back right then rather than waiting until they are demanded to you know, at gunpoint going and to be confronting put on the, the enemy? Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think they might be, but that doesn't mean that's what I would do necessarily. I might be more likely to get the hell out of there. And, uh, and and at the same time, looking at things from the perspective of today and right now and, you know, what things are like here in the United States, usually when you got somebody fighting back against the state, they go down in flames and then the news media and people tend to look at them as psychopaths and nut jobs and they get maligned quite a bit in the in the mainstream and therefore you know they don't actually move the ideas of freedom ahead any further they ultimately just sabotage it, it with, i don't think it was their intention their intention was to defend their property and you know defend their own personal liberty but the fact is the government uses those lone gunmen in the woods kind of scenarios as an excuse to build more government, as an right. excuse to buy more tanks. Oh well, there was some guy holed up in his house talking about freedom, and then he shot at us. We need a, we need three more Bearcats the next for the next time. This well, happens. as if they ever needed an excuse to further militarize the police departments. I mean, they're going to do these things anyway, and so like I don't have a whole lot of sympathy for those arguments when people say that okay, well you're actually sabotaging it. I don't think that they are. The truth of the matter is, is that they're going to do this no matter what, and if they you know hop on something as an excuse, they'll just they would have done it anyway. I mean. You, you, There's they, an they argument got, there. Sure. They got they got the bear cat and keen. There's no violence here. You know, you guys are no threat to anybody. They said, you know, they they wanted it in Concord. There's no violence. The last in shootings in Keene were by the police. Exactly. And so so they they don't. It's complete nonsense to say that like, well, you know, this is why this is happening. It's not. They're doing it because this is what governments do, and they do this mm -hmm. inevitably over time. You know, this is why I have like this conversation with minarchists. Like, look. Uh, uh, Tyranny is minarchy plus time, right? You give a you create sure. you create a monopoly on force, you create that institution, and you wait, and it will become every horrible story we've ever heard in the history of mankind. There's it's absolutely an inevitable thing. So if people are starting to realize that and they're in the minority and this sort of drives them crazy and they lash out violently against the people who have violently victimized them in the past, I don't like um, this demonization that goes on about those people, you know, I even I even wrote a thing about the guy who shot at the the, the Pennsylvania State I don't think Troopers. They're bad people. Recently, I just know? think they're desperate people who don't have another am answer. They don't have another out. They don't have a way to escape their situation. Or at least they don't feel like that they do. I think that if if a lot of those people who felt like they were cornered and felt like they didn't have any other options, if they just move to New Hampshire and connect with a community of people who actually feels like freedom is important, then that might revitalize them enough and give them enough hope to not go out on a suicidal uh, rampage. Yeah, and I, I, would, I, I would prefer they not go on a suicidal rampage. I, I agree with you wholeheartedly, and I mean, I, I um, it's unfortunate to me. I used to, to feel me. like them. Yeah, I've, I've, I sometimes still do feel I still like have them. The, you know? I, I still have the body armor from back when I was that way. You know, like, <laughs> I still, I still, you know, I can relate. You went, you went a step further than me, man. I really? just got guns. You got body armor. To, <laughs> Ian's really gearing up for the for the for the rampage over here. Yeah. <laughs> but you I know, used to be that. I guy. think it's unfortunate though, because you know what? The people come here and they have those ideas, and a lot of times they get demonized and chased out. I'm expelled from the Free State Project just for freaking. You know, yeah. writing a couple of articles to that effect and not, you know, saying, hey, everybody go out, get your guns and start shooting. Well, but, you, you know, know, I disagreed with that I know. Uh, on the part of the Free State it's, Project. It's unfortunate. Was, I know you did. It was reactionary and, and, and a mistake, I think, that they made. Thank you. And I and I appreciate that. And I, and I know that, you know, you and a number of other people are have been, you know— um, not have not been uh, supportive of, of those actions. It's unfortunate the that Free so State many Project people are. The Free State Project has made— a few mistakes, you know, they've made some decisions beyond you, Chris Cantwell, that yeah. I didn't agree with over the years. Uh, I've taken to the airwaves to criticize them on those decisions. They and we still have a relationship. I, you know, I'm not willing to bail out and call it quits on them simply because the board sometimes really sucks in their decision making ability. Um, I think ultimately the idea is a sound one. Move people who love freedom together to the same place. And that idea, and, I support. Yeah, I'm, I'm here with you. Whether you agree with, you know, Chris Cantwell's opinions or not is is irrelevant. It's immaterial to the discussion. Uh, we can, we need more people. 
who are here, more people who are doers, whether or not you join the Free State Project. If, you, if you're not comfortable joining the Free State Project, go sign the Shire Society Declaration at ShireSociety.com. You've done that, Chris. I've done that. And you know what? If you think the Free State Project really screwed up by kicking me out or doing something else, then go and like sign their thing sooner than later because theoretically, once they hit the 20,000 mark, they're, you know, the board gets abolished and the, they all lose their jobs. Supposedly. Yeah, supposedly. <laughs> I'm sure that like, like at like 19,500 signers, they'll just change their charter, but you know, that <laughs> It'll just be another thing to bash them about. Sure, sure. And by the way, they're over 16,000 right now. So they're 80% of the way to the goal of 20,000 signers, 20,000 people who will hopefully, most of them will make the move to New Hampshire. Those who have not died waiting, because uh, some, some of the members have died at this point. The Free State Project's been going on for a decade. Odds are good not all 20,000 are going to make the move. But if we get 10,000 of them, I think that'll be pretty killer. We've already got over 1,600 that are here in New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project. And who knows how many more who didn't sign up uh, yeah. for the Free State Project. Absolutely. I mean, you multiply that by, you know, five or six, you know, it's it'd be incredible. So, well, at five or six, I don't know, that seems a little optimistic. I would say maybe a, a couple hundred people have probably moved here who didn't sign Oh, no, I'm saying, like, if, if we have, uh, what, 1,500, 1,600 people here now, I'm saying if you oh, multiply yeah, yeah. that number by five or six, I mean, we're going to be a more yeah. effective force. And if you think that Susan Bruce and Stop Freaking are freaking out now, wait until there's five times as many of us here. The two people, or the Susan Bruce is this blogger in Keene who, I don't know if anybody reads her blog. Besides no, they don't. A handful, Nobody reads her blog. <laughs> besides a handful of her friends. But uh, she's one of these people who's constantly on the attack against the Free State Project. And now you, Chris Cantwell, you've been featured on her blog more than once, Yeah, uh, as have I. Uh, she's upset at you now because you've uh, you've changed your name on Facebook to Chris Friedman. No, it's not that I changed it. It's like I have a backup <laughs> profile because these lunatics report everything I well, do, so I need more that. than one. Yeah, she doesn't know Of that. course she doesn't know that because she has no interest in getting her facts straight. Right. She's a loser and a liar. She's uh, accused you of having a cult name now. Yeah, I have a cult name because I have an alternative <laughs> Facebook profile named Chris Freeman. Oh, yeah. Well, you're so smart, aren't you, you little Democrat? So, yeah, there are people up here uh, who love the state. They're pretty upset about the existence of the Free State Project. And uh, the more people we can get here, the more they're going to freak out. And the more of them are going to ultimately leave, I predict. They're going to get tired of opposing people who are actually coming out to talk about freedom. Like, if you go to the State House, I don't know if you've done, have you ever been to the State House, Chris? Just for Can't the look? 420 thing. Okay, so you've never actually been in there and testified or anything. Anytime you go to the State House in New Hampshire as a, a liberty activist, you see people you know. You see people who are freedom oriented folks who are there to testify against bad legislation. Uh, Pro-state legislation, you know, there are people in there who are testifying against it. Pro-freedom legislation, people in there pro, uh, testifying for it. Basically, the only people who go and testify in front of the state legislature are lobbyists, statists, like the people who work for the state, and free staters and liberty activists. That's it. I mean, it's it's pretty consistent. Well, I I certainly like to see more of us in there and fewer of them. Yeah, it's uh, we're working on it, and it's pretty exciting. We'll come back with more, and we did, we got to get to the bear spray story here in a moment. It's free talk live. Flooring has changed its finishing process. So for the first time ever, Lumber Liquidators is clearing out their current stock of Bellawood at unbelievable prices. Get Bellawood Red Oak Solid pre-finished hardwood for an incredible $2.99 per square foot. That's over 30% off already low prices. Even stunning, solid Bellawood Bolivian Rosewood for an amazing 51% off. These are not seconds. This is first quality with a transferable 100-year warranty. So go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest you. Special 18-month financing is available. But hurry, these clearance deals end Tuesday. Wake up and smell the freedom. One of the easiest things you can do to help Liberty is to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to help keep them drone-proof. You can set up your home computer to download and share Freedom Fiends archives over BitTorrent. You can even set up scheduling so it only shares while you're asleep or at work. Put your unused computing power to work and help keep the Freedom Fiends around well into the future. Simply go to freedomfiends.com and click on the Torrent Club link and learn how to torrent and share Freedom Fiends archives. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. 
For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30%, while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should, too. Find out what they know. Call us, and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Uh, excuse me, is this where I get a license to start a new business? I wouldn't be hasty. You have to get a license to go out of business, too, you know. Oh, well, look, I've invented this little anti-gravity machine, see? Oh, is that why you're walking two inches above the floor? <laughs> oh, yes, it's, it's very comfortable. It saves on shoe leather. Yeah, well, you have to fill out these forms and report to the Human Services Department of Manpower Orientation and register with the Fair Employment Practice Commission, just the Wage wanna... and Hour Division of the Employment Standards Administration, the State Sales and Income Tax Division, the Internal Revenue Service, look, and the I Social Security Administration of the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare, and, of course... OSHA. OSHA? I thought that was a little town in Wisconsin. You'll find out. Say, floating around like that could be dangerous. Have you checked with the Consumer Product Safety Commission? Well, not yet. You Come see, to think of it, you actually are flying, aren't you? Look, you need to go over to the Federal Aviation Administration and the Transportation... It's very hard to get anything done these days if you're in business, but Free Enterprise built this country. Think what could happen if we don't keep it free. A public service of this station and the Center for the Defense of Free Enterprise, Bellevue, Washington. We just can't have people floating about unregulated, you know. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can take control of the airwaves here at 855-450-FREE. Coming up, we'll find out about magic mushrooms and whether or not they might be helpful for people with depression. Also, you can share your thoughts on whatever happens to be on your mind. And if you like coffee, then check out BuzzBox. You can get a free pound of it to try it out. All you have to do is pay the shipping cost. All you need to do to get that free pound is go to coffee.freetalklive.com. You can get signed up for their auto ship program. You can customize how often you receive a shipment of their delicious high-end coffee. It is, by the way, 100% organic, shade-grown, and top 1% grade Arabica. So it's great coffee, but they also do something unique at BuzzBox that you don't get from those other coffee companies. They actually are giving a portion of your purchase to us here at Free Talk Live for us to use with Kiva. Kiva's a microloans company. They've been providing microloans for many years now. I don't know when they started, but I remember talking about them like a decade ago here on Free Talk Live. And uh, we've teamed up with Kiva to, for every 10 listeners that buys coffee through BuzzBox at coffee.freetalklive.com, every 10 listeners funds one new microloan to help somebody make a, a new life for themselves, create a new business, uh, and be entrepreneurial. I think it's very exciting in, of course, very difficult parts of the world. That's what Kiva can help us do. And uh, BuzzBox, and Free Talk Live, and Kiva have all teamed up for this. So go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Again, you just pay the shipping cost, and you get a free pound of coffee. You can cancel your subscription at any time. So you get to, great, uh, to drink great coffee and help make a difference in people's lives all around the world through the microloans via Kiva. And as Mark has pointed out, 
once the micro loan is paid off, we will take that money and give it out again. So it just we'll just keep giving out micro loans to people around the world because of this program. Very just, cool stuff. Sounds very helpful. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so our toll free number eight fifty five four fifty free. We still have to talk about the bear spray incident, Chris Cantwell. It ties into the whole threats issue. What do you do when someone threatens you if you feel like you're in imminent danger? Uh, but first. Sheriff Joe is on the line. Someone who knows a thing or two about threatening others. Sheriff Joe calling from Arizona. You're on the, uh, well, of all places, the amp lines. I didn't know we had Sheriff Joe as a Free Talk Live amplifier. Thanks for supporting uh, the show, Joe. Well, welcome. Absolutely. Look, look, guys, I just have to tell you that uh, you're giving my neighbor a lot of problems, James. And I see him walking around, pacing around by the window, and he's screaming into the phone, I don't know what you boys are doing <laughs> up there, but I need you to stop. Well, look, look Joe, uh, I think that James is a very entertaining character, shall we say. I'm not going to call him a good guy, but I think that he's great uh, for the show on Wednesdays. And some of the other AMP supporters have express similar because mm -hmm. you know joe is a great guy to verbally abuse in james, front of a large i'm james. sorry james is a great guy to verbally abuse in front of a large audience and uh i have a lot of fun doing it and it seems like some of the listeners enjoy it too so he must like it too because he keeps calling back on wednesday nights yeah i think what he is actually is like a glutton for punishment he's a guy <laughs> he's a guy and i can sort of relate to this i think james likes being angry right like anger is sort of like an addictive drug you know uh, Joe, you all right no. over there? No, I don't think so. Now, you you two boys listen up here. James helped build uh, America, all right? Him and his dad, Paul. His <laughs> dad helped him to build Tent City, the finest prison ever. Well, that's well, right, and he's also he's also in, uh, important to uh, education in America for telling us about Japan every single time he calls uh, Free Talk Live. He's on his way over to Tokyo as we speak. Oh, that's unfortunate because <laughs> I think he's a job. he's a great American. But listen, just because you're up there in New Hampshire or wherever you are, walking around with that old six shooter strapped around your hip, walking around acting all tough, you need to take it easy with James. All right, he's well, a special person, and special people need to be dealt with well, in a special manner. He's special, all right. Thanks Joe. for the call, Joe. I appreciate hearing from you. The toll free number. Uh, tonight, 8.55, free. I am going to go ahead and start a timer, and I want to see how long it takes James for to call James in. to call now in. That, now that he's been summoned. Okay. Last, the timer the, is yeah, now ticking. Oops. The, uh, the last time it was like the next call was, was James. As soon as somebody like even mentioned him without even using his name, he called in. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, and by the way, our listeners, some of our listeners were confused the other night on our podcast. Live listeners, radio listeners, you did not get this. Uh, but there have been there's been this thing that James in Arizona will do frequently is he'll call in after he's done calling. So like he'll call the show, we'll put him on. He's so generous like that. And then he'll just keep calling, um, even though he's already been on once, because uh, he wants to harangue the hosts or whatever it is his goal is. Maybe he feels like he didn't get enough time on the air. So last night we we was it last night two nights ago or something like that. Should give him his own podcast on LRN. <laughs> no, I don't think so. But we did give him his own after show. Basically, uh, you know, I took his call after the show. And went ahead and just started recording and said something to the effect of, you're on with the James Witt after show. And then just, <laughs> and then just let him go. Oh, I'm going to have to download that he after. He did go. Where do they download it, Ian? Uh, freetalklive.com is probably the easiest place. It's also on our SoundCloud channel. So I think it was Monday night. Okay. If you want to, if you want to pull that up, I want to hear the James. And it's explicit, show. right? So it's it's an after show. So you know, we let him go, and he got very dirty, and that was it. Nice. Yeah, it was about four or five minutes of uh, James. So for those of you who uh, hate uh, James Witt, you don't have to listen. You can just press the stop button whenever he comes on at the James Witt after show. Those of you who really like to listen to him, well, then you got an extra four or five minutes of him with no interruptions, That's great. by the way. Excellent. Uh, so join us here on the air, 855-450 free. Bear spray. Let's get back to that story because you barely, uh, barely, you uh, barely got into it, uh, Chris Cantwell. <laughs> oh, a little double entendre there, Ian. <laughs> what, uh, what was the story? What precipitated right, so, you showing up at some guy's house with a can of bear spray? <laughs> yeah, so it, it's bear repellent. It's basically like a pepper spray fire hose, right? 
And so there's a there's a guy. Look, when isn't I, it true? Hold on, isn't it true you can't sell pepper spray in New York, but you can sell bear spray? What it is is you can't you can't like buy it through the mail. Now you, it wasn't always the case. Pepper spray used to be illegal. Now it's legal, but you can only buy it from an FFL now, right? In New York, right? So I and you can't have a stun gun at all unless you're a cop. I actually have a misdemeanor weapons charge. What from, if I come into New York with pepper spray? Is that legal? Yes, okay. but you can't have. Um, you can only have OC. You can't have CS. You can't have like tear gas. Like okay. you can buy. You can buy self defense sprays here in New Hampshire that have um, CS tear gas in them. You can't have that in New York. You can only have OC pepper spray, and there's a specific warning that has to be on the label. So. You know, I mean, generally speaking, I mean, I've I've gotten caught with CS in my pocket in New York, and cops have let me go because they're just like, okay, it's pepper spray, whatever, yeah. and they, they, you know, they don't know any better. But you, uh, there are some regulations surrounding it. But you can buy uh, even on the internet. There's no restriction on you buying like dog repellent or bear repellent, right? And so I wanted to buy pepper spray on the internet. I found out it was illegal, and and that they wouldn't ship it to you, but they would ship you bear repellent and so i've had this can of bear repellent for quite some time and it's like i said it's like a pepper spray fire hose it's some really nasty stuff and so i i keep this with me in my vehicle you Mm -hmm. know it's it's the it's the best weapon that i can legally carry in new york state okay and so there was an incident with a gentleman a little backstory like look i haven't always been a libertarian all right Mm -hmm. i used to initiate a good amount of force. I was a bad guy. The first time I got locked up wasn't for being a good guy, and I ran around with bad people. Yep. And one of these people who I ran around with made a threat against me on the internet. He Recently? Said, um, like two years ago, a year ago? Yeah, within like the last two years. year and a half, maybe. Not even. Uh, when was the last time you encountered this guy prior to this? Prior to this, the last time I encountered him? I think I actually drank with him within the last six months <laughs> before this happened. All right, we'll get, we'll get into the story here, what it was that precipitated the threat and the response. It's Free Talk Live. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to MyMagicMud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, MyMagicMud.com. Hi, this is Larry Smith. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. When the cleaners ruined some special clothing, all they could do was show us a sign that said they weren't responsible. But when they got the letter from one of our Legal Shield attorneys, he promptly gave us a check for $1,152. Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidavi. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. 
You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live, here to take your calls about whatever's on your mind. You just dial in toll-free and bring up anything you want at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online at freetalklive.com. Those other talk show hosts in the business, the big names, they want to charge you five, six, seven, eight bucks a month for their websites. Ours is free. So go to freetalklive.com and enjoy and there's a new novel about liberty out there called Ant Farm. It's a book that uh, Ga- Gary Johnson has given praise to. Uh, Mark has been praising it up and down. He really enjoyed how it took on complex issues like military protection, judicial systems, currency, and dozens more, and explained those things so that average Joes and even young adults can easily understand how well these systems could work without government force and how state intervention screws them all up. If you're tired of explaining to some of your friends how the roads could be built in a free market, just hand them a copy of Ant Farm. And if you're sick of explaining to your other friends about how the U.S. turned into a police state, well, hand them a copy of Ant Farm as well. Stephen Aaron Gray, the author of Ant Farm, is giving away the first four chapters for free. That's almost half the book. You can download the free chapters and get a taste of what it's like uh, over at antfarmbook.com. That's antfarmbook.com. Dot com. As we continue here, we'll get into more of the bear spray story here in a moment. But uh, you had started your timer, Chris Cantwell, a moment ago after Sheriff Joe called in yep. to ask us to lay off of, uh, of James Witt. Yes, and it took a total of 5 minutes and 41.6 seconds <laughs> for James Witt to call in. And we are so happy to have James with us. Welcome to the program, sir. You're on the air. You have something. You have something in common with my uh, infamous neighbor, Chris. Do I? Yeah, you're both pigs. Uh, oh. But I, oh, and I call in after. I thought you, you liked Joe. My call because you often like to. You often like to pose questions when you've dumped my call because that's the kind of man you are. But if you tried your little. Uh, <laughs> Uh, not really. I'm not really interested in what in, you have to say. Joe's <laughs> neighborhood. No, because you're a pussy. That's why you hang up on me. You don't have anything interesting to say because I don't call the suck your you know what like Cantwell does after the show. And by the way, you're, you're <laughs> yeah, some Yeah, because that's what I'm all about. I'm all about kissing Cantwell. Ian's ass. <laughs> you're some garbage podcast, by the way, Cantwell. Yeah. I do admit I wasted two hours of my life listening to you and Ian. It was dreadfully boring. But I called in again <laughs> after you dumped my well, call on Monday. Well, thank you for becoming uh, older Ian, with me. I asked you a question. Did you take your girlfriend, the teeny bopper, to the prom? Did you pick her up at her mom and dad's house like everybody else that has a teenage uh, uh, boyfriend? You know, really, my relationships are none of your business. Just hang up on them. I asked you a question. How old are you? You can ask all the questions you want. a 17-year-old girlfriend? I do think it's funny that the atheist said GD when he heard you had a teenage girlfriend. I don't know who you're even talking about. I'm talking about the pig right next to you. Yeah, no, I, I think I did say I, we had to dump he my GD on the FCC airwaves. He knows what I'm talking about because he 
quit smoking dope, so he remembers saying GD last Wednesday. <laughs> he said, hey, I quit right smoking to you, pot too, by the way. I'll have you know that. What's Did you? What's so funny? Answer the question. You pick her up at her mom and dad's house. It's none of your the damn business, honestly, really. It's with? not even like, I, it's, it's. look, we oh, have really? to, to okay. bring new topics to the radio show, James. You know. Hey, Cantwell, yeah. why don't you just answer it for me then? Cantwell? Why don't, why don't you know I hang up on you and call you a useless scumbag? <laughs> why don't I just call you an idiot and tell you to get a life and do something else? If you don't like right. what we're doing here, why are you listening Instead to it? Instead of obsessing over my relationship. I'm telling you, this guy, I, I don't life. even... I, I, He's. It's got to be part of his. Um, I, I don't know if I can say the word. It's, it's his fantasies when he's all by himself, and mm. you know when he's uh, getting right with himself. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that this is part of it, I, and and it's really you deranged. Think that, wait, wait, you think that while he's on the phone with us, that he's self pleasuring? I think. I don't think he's doing it while he's, afterwards. I've never been that angry while self pleasuring, but like I, you know, might go like I might get really angry and then go handle my own business like immediately. <laughs> afterwards because i mean have you ever been so mad you got an erection no i have oh it's a wonderful <laughs> feeling and you just have to go deal with it like immediately afterwards and i think that's what he's doing i think he's just getting himself excited so that he can go into his little broom closet in his janitor job somewhere and you know put some some uh floor soap on his hand and take yeah. care of matters Toll free number tonight is 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. Yeah, the short answer is my relationship's none of your business. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So moving on, uh, we were talking okay, about. Okay, so we were talking about um, uh, uh, running after idiots with. Um, Fire hoses so and pepper spray. So you were a bad market. guy at some point yeah. in the past. I was. I, I was like. I, we were like the nefarious drug dealers, right? So mm-hmm. like, you know, look. I lived in a drug house. I ran around with bad people. We robbed other drug dealers. We did bad things. Okay, we were involved with bad people. And one of the guys who I was involved with back at that time, I had like. Um, he ended up uh, dating. Um, a girl who I was still talking to, and then the girl was like, "Why don't you come hang out with us?" And then uh, you know, I ran into this guy maybe six months before this incident, and uh, and then they had they had created a joint Facebook profile. Is, is oh, what one of those song, things, right? And I just thought it was so corny, you know. And it did was, they combine their names together? Yes, as well? exactly. And it was just the cheesiest thing. So like, I took a screenshot of it and I posted it on Facebook and I made fun of. These people who were at one point my friends, right? Mm. The girl got very upset about it and was going to her boyfriend like, make him take it down, make him take it down. <laughs> and I was like, well, not taking anything down, no. And then he he devolves into threats and he says mm. the next time he sees me, he's going to F me up. Okay. Now, in my neighborhood and the people that I used to deal with, that's a very serious problem because we used to tell people, next time I see you, I'm going to F you up. You believe And guess him. what? Yeah. We F'd him up. Yeah. You know, we put people in hospitals and stuff. So You didn't think he was just talking ass. You no, he him. didn't. And he associates with, with bad people who would love to come after me still to this day. So the fact of the matter is, I was like, look, this guy thinks that he's going to come after me. I'm going to go head him off at the pass and remind him that, like, if you jump me on the street when you're by yourself, I show up at your house when you don't have your friends around. And so sure enough, I did. I showed up at his house and all of a sudden, you know, he wasn't really too interested in the confrontation. And I made mm-hmm. a whole bunch of noise out in front of his house. And he came outside. He And when he came outside, he had a hockey stick, you know, and he lifted up the hockey stick. I came up without anything in my hands. I had the bear spray was in my jacket pocket, my inside jacket mm-hmm. pocket. He, he brought up the, the hockey stick to swing the hockey stick at me. And I pulled out the bear spray and I pointed at him. I said, you're an effing tough guy, huh? And he ran back at his house. <laughs> So this is, in my book, this is classic classic case escalation of force. This guy makes a threat. I confront the aggressor. The aggressor pulls a weapon. I pull a superior weapon. The aggressor retreats, and I let the aggressor retreat. Mm -hmm. I didn't spray him. I didn't attack him. I didn't continue the conflict after that. I put the guy in his place, and the problem was solved. That's good. Because some would say that you would have. Like like the people that read your articles would have thought that you would have just gone ahead and, Waha! It's a chance to spray someone! (laughs) Because, like, you know, you would have been justified, right? He had a hockey stick. He was threatening you. I mean, in theory, you would have been justified in using the bear spray, right? Exactly. So the the the, the situation was— So you de-escalated, sort of, that situation. No, I escalated <laughs> the conflict until he didn't want it anymore. I see. You know, and that's sort of—look, there's, there's, a, there's a lot to be said for you de-escalating conflicts. Yeah, exactly. But there are people who will, like, escalate the conflict in, until you respond to it, right? Mm-hmm. And and these are some of those people that I know from New York, okay, that we would, we would escalate a conflict— you know, almost indefinitely until like the one party was just too scared to go along with it any longer. Right. And so 
I will, uh, you know, depending on the situation, I'll, I'll over-escalate a conflict to the point where somebody's just like, this guy's insane, and they'll mm -hmm. walk away from it, you know? And, and, I've, and I've had a great deal of success doing that, you know? So, I think it's an interesting story. You know, and, and in other cases, you know, the, the, the thing is, you know, for example, here, like, I can carry a gun, right? So yep. if somebody, if somebody tells me, yeah, somebody says, next time I see you, I'm going to F you up. And I'm going to be like, good luck with that, pal, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know, if I think that there's some kind of killer, if I think that they're going to pull out their 45, you know, behind my back, I might treat it differently. But, the, the, you know, for the most part, if somebody's going to challenge me to a fist fight or something like that, I'm really not too concerned about it, pal, because, you know, I, my... My revolver will end a fist fight rather quickly. Mm -hmm. And you had the revolver on your hip the other night. Uh, I think it was, was it Monday night? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when there was a bit of a conflict here in the neighborhood where we do this show from. We'll, uh, we can talk more about that here in a little bit. Your calls are welcome. You can take control of the airwaves here. And we still have to talk about the mushrooms. I want to get into that coming up. We'll we'll wait on the neighborhood conflict. Guns we'll and about, mushrooms. We'll talk about the shrooms. Next on Free Talk Live. That's right. Guns and drugs tonight here with Christopher <laughs> Cantwell. ChristopherCampbell.com, his website. Our website, freetalklive.com. You can go there, get interactive in a variety of different ways. And, of course, the best way to interact is to get on the phones toll free at 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live. Do you drink coffee? Was the last cup of coffee you had really good? Free Talk Live has teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you the best of the best coffee. Shade grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is for every 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. Get a free pound to try it out. A free pound of the best of the best coffee. Help others one cup at a time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Summertime is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long-term customers know summer is the time to stock up at HerbalHealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for summer specials, including all sizes of colloidal silver, colloidal minerals, and intestinal freedom on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, hoodia, and metabolic complex and pro-metabolic, all on sale now. Also, the anti-parasite intestinal freedom and wormwood plus complex, plus stevia liquid sweetener and the super enzymes, all on sale for summer at HerbalHealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and look for summer specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education. Since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American Empire? The Empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. 
Thanks to Bitcoin, LRN.FM is able to provide our free-to-air satellite channel across North and Central America. You can listen to LRN.FM 24-7 via satellite for no monthly cost. Learn more about our satellite channel at sat.lrn.fm. And if you'd like to help us continue to expand, you can send us Bitcoins via the address you'll find under the Bitcoin graphic in the right column of LRN.FM. To learn more about Bitcoin, visit weusecoins.com. That's weusecoins.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you are invited here to take control of the airwaves at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Go to freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features that are waiting for you on our site. If you like the show and you want to help support Free Talk Live, then shop with us. Go to shop.freetalklive.com. Enter Amazon through the links you'll find there. There's Amazon UK, Amazon Canada, and Amazon US. You just go and get your shopping taken care of through shop.freetalklive.com, and Free Talk Live will get a cut of the sale. That makes a huge difference for us when you do that because you're getting the same prices, same great deals, same huge selection that you're used to from Amazon. It's just that Amazon cuts us a portion of their profits because we sent them the business. So go and get your shopping done at shop.freetalklive.com. Now, you can't buy everything at Amazon, including tickets to Coins in the Kingdom. It's coming up. It's a Bitcoin party, not just a convention. This is a Bitcoin party at Walt Disney World Resort in Orlando, Florida. Free Talk Live will be there broadcasting live. And you're invited. All kinds of great big names from the Bitcoin and Liberty communities will be there. Jason King from Sean's Outpost, MK Lords from Bitcoin Not Bombs, Pamela Morgan from Empowered Law, Charlie Shrem. You may know Charlie Shrem. He's formerly uh, from BitInstant. The feds came after him. I'm sure he'll be telling his story. Kyle Drake of the Skyhook Project, Project Skyhook, the Bitcoin vending machine company. They're going to be there. Jeffrey Tucker from Liberty.me, as well as Will Pangman from Topeak and many more. Go to coinsinthekingdom.com to learn more about the event. It's happening at the Wyndham Lake Buena Vista in downtown Disney World, Saturday, October 4th through Monday, October 6th. This is going to be here before you know it. So get your tickets now while you still can. Tickets are just $60. I'm amazed that they can get a price that cheap at a Disney World hotel. The hotel rooms themselves are less than 100 bucks, 99 bucks <laughs> per night. Kids under 12 stay free, uh, and it's just a it's going to be a great time. Fun, in, in fact, is mandatory at Coins in the Kingdom. Go to coinsinthekingdom.com and come celebrate magic internet money at the Magic Kingdom Saturday, October 4th through Monday, October 6th. We'll see you there. Now, before we get on with the show, I, somebody brought it to my attention that I implied that James Witt was a janitor. And I just want to apply, uh, apologize to all the janitors of the world for associating you with that man. That was not fair of me to janitors because uh, obviously James is a low slimy creature <laughs> well i didn't even hear you uh make liken him to a janitor Did i you just really implied that? that he was like self-pleasuring in the janitor's closet like uh, i just okay. i just okay. like have this like image of him like i don't know running around with like a mop like trying to hit on like little girls and stuff so like you weren't that say, you weren't saying that uh that he was like a janitor you were just insinuating I was implying that, that that's where he was self-pleasuring right. was in the janitor's closet while he was running around like i don't know an elementary school yeah. or something like that Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that because no, I certainly wouldn't want anyone out there to think that uh, that you would liken him to a janitor. Janitors are a or liken most... janitors to him. Right. You know, I wouldn't J want to do that. Janitors are probably one of the most important jobs in America. I mean, it's talking about an unsung hero. Uh, these are the people who make things clean, make very important things, things that we take for granted clean. If it weren't for the janitors of America, the then people... your house would look like mine. <laughs> I don't know. Your house is actually in pretty good shape. I know. I'm just, just a little self-deprecating humor. Okay. okay. I'm calling uh, myself a slobby. And no, I haven't seen that. And maybe it's because you, you're living with Josie uh, the Outlaw. Maybe you're keeping things a little bit uh, more pristine than they otherwise would. Yeah, there's some influence there. Yeah, absolutely. You know. So, uh, yeah, janitors, they're great. They perform a great service. Thank you, all the world's janitors, for your service uh, without you. It'd be a much dirtier place, and I appreciate cleanliness. So, toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Uh, let's see. We were going to talk about psychedelic mushrooms. Chris Cantwell, you had a story from where? Yeah, the story's from CNN, and it was of particular interest to me because I don't even – as I don't know how much I've talked about on here. Like, I don't do drugs. Like, I don't even smoke weed. And you have, though. I have, but it's not my thing, right? You've like, done mushrooms. I, I 
have done done mushrooms, yeah. The last time I did mushrooms was uh, in um, 2013. Okay. You know, and the last time I had done it before that was probably over 10 years ago. It was 2013 for me. That was when I I swore them off because I was tired of puking to get high. Yeah, I I have never suffered that with uh, with mushrooms, but I like I I have found them to be and you know far different from acid or PCP or many of the other drugs that I used mm-hmm. to do. I always found mushrooms like sort of therapeutic, right? That like it was a nice way to I don't know reflect to get in touch with myself. And Absolutely. Stuff. And I saw this story today uh, in CNN, and it says um, think psychedelics, and you'll probably think of bright colors, hallucinations, spirituality, and an overall mystical experience. For centuries, these drugs have been <laughs> that used. That is, in... if you've actually used them. All oh, right, if, yeah, unless you if, just like saw like reefer madness, and you're right. like, rrr, rrr, oh my god, you're gonna die. Yeah, if you're just like somebody who doesn't know anything about them, then you may be. You know, believe all kinds of lies about psychedelics. Right. You're going to try to fly off a roof or something like that. Hasn't been my experience. But I think it's interesting that this is appearing at CNN.com and not like, you know, the psychedelic experience or website or something right, like that. Right, exactly. If I was reading this in high times, I probably wouldn't have even brought it to the show. But, but... it's interesting because CNN, they have uh, Sanjay Gupta on their staff and he's like this talking head doctor character who's been on the news for a long time he made headlines last year when he reversed positions about marijuana and he had he had for the longest time gone on the air and talked about how medical marijuana is bad and it's just a you know it's just a front for legalization and it kind of took all the prohibitionist lines about marijuana and then at some point he actually looked into it and he came out and honestly recanted what he'd said. He actually went through the process of creating a feature-length documentary film about cannabis and has totally changed his tune. So wow. it, I, it's not surprising to me. Like to somebody who doesn't know about that, they'd be surprised to see an article like this on CNN. But CNN has sort of been out there with Sanjay Gupta. He's not the author of this story. I, I looked at it. You sent it to me earlier Yeah, tonight, this is uh, but- Mira Sendling. But I saw a headline recently that said that he's also now looking into these things as well. He's looking into other psychedelic research to uh, to learn about that, too. So it sounds like he's really had his mind opened uh, on this topic. And CNN, th- that they're publishing this, you know, they deserve some credit. I, I definitely do think it says something. It's not something that you'd expect to uh, – it's not something that you'd expect to see – in CNN. Uh, So the story continues, but today the ability of these drugs to alter our brain function is being tapped into as a potentially therapeutic for a range of mental health conditions from anxiety and depression to addiction and obsessive compulsive disorder or OCD. Somebody ought to prescribe this for James in Arizona. I think that I... I think it would do wonders for James in Arizona. Uh, it says, only by losing the self can you find the self, explains Dr. Robin Carhart Harris from Imperial College London. These may not be the usual words of a scientist, but there is biology <laughs> behind them. People r- try and run away from things and to forget, but with psychedelic drugs, they're forced to confront and really look at themselves, he mm. says. The drugs Carhart Harris is referring to are hallucinogens such as magic mushrooms, specifically the active chemical inside them, psilocybin. We excuse me, we're beginning to identify the biological basis of the reported mind expansion associated with psychedelic drugs, he says. Psilocybin is not addictive and is interesting to researchers for its ability to make users see the world differently. The team at Imperial College has begun to unravel why. Carhart Harris scanned the brains of 30 healthy volunteers after they had been injected with psilocybin. And Whoa. F- yeah. Like, <laughs> so magic mushrooms are so dangerous that they have to be illegal, so they resort to using them intravenously, <laughs> right, <laughs> for their for their research purposes. Well, it sounds like they've, uh, I don't know if they've extracted the psilocybin. I don't know how you get psilocybin outside of the mushroom. There's probably some sort of process. I've never you- felt any desire to make mushrooms stronger. I don't know why they would do that. <laughs> it's like that Dennis Leary bit about crack. You know what I'm talking about? I don't know. It's like only in America could there be a guy who cocaine wasn't strong enough yeah, for. Okay. You know? <laughs> it's like well, they're injecting psilocybin. The, well, actually, this is typically how it's done in a uh, you know a laboratory environment. There were some studies done on DMT. Uh, there's a movie about DMT, which is another very powerful uh, psychedelic. Uh, entheogenic drug very very powerful it's amazing and there's a movie about it called the spirit molecule and they interview people who were involved in this laboratory testing of dmt and the way they did it was hospital environment they're in a bed they're you know they've got a needle and they injected them with uh, with dmt so in the same way i guess it's a it's it's a way to measure right because if you just take mushrooms 
one of the problems with taking an eighth of mushrooms, okay, yeah, you can weigh the mushrooms. You know how much the mushrooms weigh. Right. But you don't actually know how much psilocybin is in one of those mushrooms. For right. instance, the as I understand it, I'm not a I'm not a mushroom expert. I've done them a number of times. Uh, but as I understand it, it's the caps, the uh, the heads of the mushrooms, if you will. That's what where I've been the, told the strongest too. concentration of the psilocybin yeah. is. So if you get more caps, man, like you get all stems. Right. If you get all stems, then you're probably not going to have as uh, intense of a trip as if you have some of the caps in there. Uh, and again, even with the caps, you really don't know what the concentration of psilocybin is in there. I mean, so it's just kind of a roll of the dice to some extent. Yeah, exactly. So they injected it um, and found more primitive regions of the brain associated with emotional thinking became more active and the brain's, quote, default mode network associated with high-level thinking, self-consciousness, and introspection was disjointed and less active. We know that a number of mental illnesses such as OCD and depression are associated with excessive connectivity of the brain and the default mode network becomes overconnected, says so they David disconnect. Nutt. So this disconnects some of those nodes that would normally be active with anxiety and depression? Yeah, I think think that like look i've let's, I've, let's come back yeah. with more more analysis uh, opinion from well we're not really experts but we've done mushrooms <laughs> 855 450 free radio is the most personal of mediums i exist right now in your head if you listen to free talk live regularly you know me free talk live is on more than 160 radio stations around the u.s and has been downloaded on every continent around the world hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from six hundred dollars a month to six thousand dollars a month imagine what we can do for your business project website or idea email me mark at freetalklive.com is gun ownership about target shooting hunting and self-defense or is there more to it both Keepers and Brayburn Entertainment present Molon Labe, inspired by the works of Edwin Vieira Jr., explains why we need to revitalize the state militia system. Featuring Ron Paul, Pat Buchanan, Larry Pratt, and Stuart Rhodes. Available on DVD at moviepubs.net, oathkeepers.org, and gunowners.org. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, September 17th, 2014. Silver is trading at $18.68 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,237 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $463. Antiwar.com reports, Iraqi Prime Minister Haider Abadi seems to be taking his promises of a broad coalition surprisingly seriously with his nominees for defense and interior ministers and fueling growing anger among the entrenched power base. Abadi nominated Jabir Jabiri, a Sunni Arab, as his defense minister. Jabiri is considered a moderate, but including a Sunni in such a high-profile position would greatly improve the chances of courting Sunni tribes to back military operations against the Islamic State. Interior Ministry nominee Riyad al-Gharib did not do much better, even though he is a member of the ruling State of Law Coalition. No alternative candidates have yet been proposed, though in both cases, it seems like alternatives are likely to be equally controversial. Even if a body tries to backtrack and goes with Maliki era insiders, they're going to face internal faction fights as the various blocs are all seeking to secure powerful positions for
for themselves. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. Reuters reports NASA will partner with Boeing and SpaceX to build commercially owned and operated space taxis to fly astronauts to the International Space Station, ending U.S. dependence on Russia for rides. NASA also considered a bid by privately owned Sierra Nevada Corp, but opted to award longtime aerospace contractor Boeing and California's SpaceX with contracts valued at a combined $6.8 billion to develop, certify, and fly their seven-person capsules. Boeing was awarded $4.2 billion and SpaceX $2.6 billion. SpaceX is run by technology entrepreneur Elon Musk, also the chief executive officer of electric car manufacturer Tesla Motors. Musk said, SpaceX is deeply honored by the trust NASA has placed in us. It is a vital step in a journey that will ultimately take us to the stars and make humanity a multi-planet species. The contract has taken on new urgency given rising tensions between the U.S. and Russia over its annexation of Crimea and support for rebels in eastern Ukraine. NASA has said that in addition to test flights, the awards would include options for between two to six operational missions. In the spirit of Motorhome Diaries and Liberty on Tour, I intend to take the message of peace, love, and liberty on the road. During the 104-day trip, I'll be visiting at least 10 cities across the country, speaking to people about the ideas of peace, love, and liberty. To find out more about the tour or to donate, visit tour.fppradio.com. That's T-O-U-R dot F-P-P-Radio dot com. USA Today reports St. Louis County's top police officer said on Tuesday that the heavy armored trucks and some of the military-style equipment used by police in last month's unrest in Ferguson helped keep civilians and law enforcement officers safe. Colonel John Belmar's defense comes as the actions of officers in Ferguson have been broadly criticized and spurred a national debate about the militarization of local law enforcement agencies. The military buildup began after the federal government doled out increased funding in the way of the September 11th attacks. St. Louis County Police Department led the law enforcement response during the first week of protest following the shooting death of an unarmed teenager, Michael Brown. But the agency eventually relinquished the lead to Missouri State Highway Patrol at the order of Governor Jay Nixon as county officers faced criticism for its handling of the unrest. The Justice Department announced earlier this month that it would conduct a review of the St. Louis County Police Department as well as the Ferguson Police Department response to the protest. Since the Ferguson protest, Senator Claire McCaskill and other lawmakers have questioned how the federal government goes about distributing more than $1 billion a year to police departments across the country in equipment and grants. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. I just got off the phone with New York. We are the number one network in the world. And it is an honor to stand before you at such an exciting time. We're stretching boundaries that will irreparably alter people's perception of what they are willing to watch. And our next season will offer tantalizing programming that plays seamlessly into the desire of our viewers. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you just a taste of what ODS has to offer. You know the rules. Grow a pumpkin or go home. Here's the twist. Only one of you has the real pumpkin seeds. Are you a pumpkin or not? You call yourselves pumpkin growers? I know I didn't get the pumpkin seeds. I dug in there. They're bean sprouts. Starting the Pumpkin Alliance. Anyone grows a pumpkin, we split the money. Get out of my patch. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We are not doctors. This is not medical advice. But we are talking about 
Magic Mushrooms. And Christopher Cantwell with me. I'm Ian, and our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Uh, we just in the last segment of the last hour to bring you up to speed. If you're just tuning in, there's an article over at CNN.com about psychedelic mushrooms and how studies are now looking into possible effects of taking psychedelic mushrooms if you have anxiety and or depression and Maybe. looking at the reasons as to why it is that these things seem to have a positive effect. Absolutely, yeah. They they also say it might be helpful with uh, addictions to other drugs because, as we know, um, uh, mushrooms, to the best of our knowledge, are not addictive. Right? Mm-hmm. I've never had a, like a, um, uh, I've never been fiending out for mushrooms, <laughs> man. You know, I never wanted to go like rob somebody to go get some mushrooms, right? Um, and the, and what they're saying is they they scan the brains of some volunteers, and they're saying that like um, it it sort of disconnects some of the higher thinking, right? Hmm. And and in my own experience, like look, I've suffered with some depression. I've had issues with alcohol and other substances abuse Mm -hmm. and the thing with me is like i know like i'll get like stuck in my own head right and then i'm thinking about you know a million different things at once and there are all these bad ideas are going on in my head and i can't get away from them so what they're saying is um excuse me so the uh they say we know that the number a number of mental illnesses such as ocd and depression are associated with excessive connectivity of the brain and and the default node default mode network becomes overconnected um nut was formerly a a drug advisor to the UK government. Oh, is this but was, David Nutt? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So he says uh, he was uh, formerly the drug advisor to the UK government, but was fired in 2009. They said right. he cannot be both a government advisor and a campaigner against <laughs> government policy, wrote a member of the British Parliament, which I is love kind of hysterical. Guy. This is the guy, this is the same guy, David Nutt. He's got one of those memorable names. Uh, he came out with the sure chart. He, he came out with the chart of the harm chart, the drug harm chart, where it basically took. Uh, all of the you know most popular and least popular drugs or whatever, and they looked at how what kind of harm these drugs cause, both the individual and their ostensible harm to society or the world or whatever. And that was the it was a real shocking kind of study because it revealed that alcohol and heroin were the two most da- damaging drugs to both the person and the you know the society, the people that they're connected to. Whereas marijuana was like, way, you know, pretty far down the list. And uh, I think LSD or, or ecstasy were even further down the list than marijuana. Like ecstasy was listed as one of the safest uh, drugs as far as personal harm and I think that's societal insane. harm as well. I, I don't re- recall exactly where LSD was on the list, but I do remember that, that ecstasy or MDMA was lower than, uh, than cannabis was was on that list. So it was a real shocker kind of a list, made a lot of headlines, and that's where we first heard about uh, David Nutt. So it's good to hear that he's still out there uh, doing good stuff. He certainly is. And he says, uh, the the overconnectivity Nutt describes causes depressed people to become locked into rumination and concentrate excessively on negative thoughts about themselves. Quote, by disrupting that network with psilocybin, you can liberate them from those depressive symptoms by showing them it's possible to escape those thoughts, he Mm. says. Depression is estimated to affect more than 350 million people around the world, according to the World Health Organization. The current pharmaceutical approach to treatment is with selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, or SSRIs, such as Prozac, which increase levels of serotonin in the brain. Apparently, they also increase levels of shootings. Yeah, exactly. Every time you hear about some guy going up and shooting up his school, it's pretty much inevitable that you're going to hear he's on SSRIs or Mm -hmm. something like that. Scary. That's scary stuff to me, man. You don't you don't hear that about people on mushrooms. I mean, there's there's. You know, every now and then you'll hear kind of the uh, the old wives' tale about some kid who took mushrooms or LSD and then jumped off of. 20-story building. Right, and it turns out they were thinking about some movie from the 90s called Natural Born Killers, and it was complete fiction. And- <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the real story is. I mean, you, you hear these stories, but... I know all the times I've been on mushrooms, I never would have thought about doing anything like that. That's now, like the craziest, like taking mushrooms and getting into like, you know, even a, a verbal altercation with somebody is just like the, the most far off thing from yeah. my mind. It'd be like, dude, Chill no, out. thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I think I'm going to go over right. here now. I'm going to go know? take a walk in nature. See you, you know? later. And I'm not, and I'm not shy about getting into altercations right. with people, but you know, on mushrooms, I'm like, no, 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 I'm going to go seek out positivity. Thank you. Have right. a nice day. You know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I just want to enjoy the colors man so um but ssris are not effective and everyone take time to show an effect and are generally prescribed for long periods of time to maintain their effect nut thinks psilocybin could be a game changer used as part of a therapeutic package where the mind altering and confronting nature of the psychedelics are combined with therapy Mm. to treat people within just one or two doses of treatment that sounds 
shocking, right? Because if you're on the SSRI, the idea is you're going to be on that for the rest of your life. Exactly. And, and, and to get off of it is going to cause you all kinds of problems yeah. aside from your depression coming so back. So to say that, to suggest that you could have cured your depression within one to two doses and therapy sessions is... It sounds unbelievable to somebody who doesn't really understand this, but it sounds to me like completely plausible. So, for instance, uh, there, uh, there there's actually been related stories about ecstasy or MDMA and how MDMA has been used now clinically in clinical you know testings to actually cure PTSD. Yeah. Like one dose, one therapy session cured yeah to to reflect on it and to like sort of i don't know take that time and and, they, and i know that it was used in like couples therapies and stuff like that too mdma mm. um i i know with my own very limited experiences with it that like yeah like i feel a lot better for like days and weeks after having done it you know and and of course then i just get back into like drinking all the time and conspiracy theories and <laughs> da dating damaged women and just destroying myself and you know that all goes away later on but you know then i do it again and i feel good for a few mm -hmm. weeks to a few months and so i think it's i i think that the way that they're putting this is really sort of interesting that you know it allow it, it allows a person to know that they can escape those thoughts because sometimes i know in my own life and i know it with a lot of other people that they can't I, I feel like I can't control the way I think, mm -hmm. right? And so if I've got, you know, negative ideas, it's not like I just say, hey, bad ideas, go away, you know? And and if you have, like, negative ideas in your head all the time, that, you know, is it, it, it's a thing that weighs on you. Oh, it's you not know? good. And so this, this sounds like a credible thing to me. I don't know that you take mushrooms twice and then you're just cured of unhappiness forever, but, like, depression is also a thing that's really gotten, like, screwed up in its definition, right? Mm. My uncle got a divorce, and, like, he was really upset about his divorce, which is, like, perfectly normal, right? Sure. And so a doctor decided to, like, put him on antidepressants. And I'm like, well, no, there's not a medical problem no, here. My natural. uncle is in the middle of a divorce that's supposed to make him unhappy, doc. What, you know, this is crazy. And so, you know, perhaps, you know, using You're drugs. To work through it. Using drugs to try to, like, cope with temporary situations is obviously not the way to do it. And this is why, like, you know, when they say, like, 350 million people throughout the world, I don't know about all that. There Wait, was another what, story that I was people, looking what? at here, too, that they say that there's, like, they're they're talking about a blood test for depression now, which is a thing that. I'm kind of skeptical about, right? Because I, mm. I do think, like, we, we had, like, our conspiracy movie marathon at the Brutalist House the other night. You know, one of the things we watched was about, like, all these things with psychotropic drugs and them giving SSRIs to people. And the history of psychiatry is like an industry of death, lobotomies, mm. and all the lunatic things that they used to do to people. And some of this, I think, is just excuses to give people expensive medications that the insurance companies and governments will pay for and stuff like that. Um Hold the rest of that thought. Yeah. We're going to come back uh, with the uh, the mushroom topic here. But we've got Lumpy calling from the Shire. You're on Free Talk Live. Lumpy. I heard that you stopped smoking pot. And I'm really, really, really sincerely concerned. <laughs> you know what? I'm glad that you it's did It's been that. 24 hours. It's been 24 you hours. You smoke more pot. <laughs> so does Ian. What the hell did I just hear? So what's going? I mean, did you just oh, no, run I'm out just, of pot, or no? No, I'm just I'm just taking a break. That's all. Yeah. I was a little bored with it. All right, okay, that's cool. I understand. We I haven't taken a break things. in like a decade. <laughs> so well, <laughs> once upon a time, I actually quit smoking pot for a whole year. Huh? Start, if you start getting angry like Wit does, well, then the whole show is going to go down the drain. This Good is point. this is the worst tragedy. I think this this is this is terrible. <laughs> just Ian's anyway, going to strap on his body that. armor and be like, "Give me your gun. Yeah. <laughs> Back to the old me." <laughs> he's taking a break, you know, maybe it's time he's repressing all those feelings now, you know, and maybe he's repressed, maybe he's had all those peaceful feelings for so long and now he's not going to smoke in any pot and then all of a sudden he's going to become a statist and then start Strapping on his body armor. Who knows? I'm going to become the voice know? of peace on Free Talk Live. It's going to be scary. Oh, God, I hope <laughs> well, that'd be a hell of a turnaround, wouldn't it? <laughs> hey, Lumpy, thanks uh, for the call tonight, man. I appreciate it. Toll free number. Thanks for the concern, too. I appreciate that. 855 450 3733. No, I have not had my last dance with Mary Jane. Uh, just <laughs> taking a break. 855 450 3733. Because you can do that with pot. Because it's not addictive. <laughs> it's Free Talk Live. More coming up. A powerful weight loss supplement is being given out to listeners in this area on a strict first-come, first-served basis. You must be between the ages of 25 and 65 and need to lose at least 30 pounds. 
Please call now only if you qualify. 1-800-409-5432. This product can cause dramatic weight loss, so supplies are limited. It's called Final Trim. Take two capsules just once a day as directed, and you can experience maximum weight loss. Pounds in days. It uses natural ingredients, making it healthy and safe. If your weight loss with Final Trim is too dramatic, please decrease use and only take one capsule a day. Call now and you will be given a full-size supply of Final Trim to use absolutely risk-free. Repeat, Final Trim is being given out to listeners on a strict first-come, first-served basis. Supplies are limited. Call 1-800-409-5432. 1-800-409-5432. That toll-free number again is 1-800-409-5432. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw for free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power, a gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call one 800 68 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. Keenvention is coming up October 31st through November 2nd. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, attend social events like the costume party. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, James Robin Hood Cleveland, Rich Paul, and Free State Project President Carla Garrick will be keynoting. And we'll have all kinds of panels, including the new Cop Block panel and the new Movers panel hosted by the outlaw Josie Wales. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything you'd like. Right here, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We're talking about psychedelic mushrooms and how some people in the medical community are studying these drugs and finding out they might actually be really useful for helping people treat depression. And by treat, I mean maybe cure 
That, that's yeah. what they're talking about. Maybe two doses with therapy sessions of magic mushrooms could cure depression or anxiety. And that's a really exciting concept. That really would be magic. It, <laughs> no kidding. We'll come back with uh, more details on that. 855-450 free. If you'd like to share your experience, have you ever been experienced, as uh, Jimi Hendrix might ask? You can share your thoughts. Uh, our toll-free number again, 855-450 free. Join us via Skype as well. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. And speaking of mushrooms uh if you're looking to buy some you should check out the silk road silk road or some of the other options on the dark net as it's called tor the anonymizing service uh you can go to actually a website called grams where you can punch in what you're looking for if you want to look at you know punch in mushrooms grams will search all of the illicit drug uh sales sites and give you all of the results for mushrooms available across the dark net it's pretty amazing technology it's like google shopping for black market tour networks yep, that's exactly what it is amazing and it works uh so go and check that out uh, but you know buyer beware also we should put it in the standard disclaimer i'm not recommending you go out and do this uh but at the same time I've had positive experiences with it. You need to know what you're getting into, however, when you're going to engage in psychedelic uh, drugs. You need to learn about the substance in advance. Read other people's experiences. There's a great website called Arrowid.org, E-R-O-W-I-D.org. I I was just going to say Arrowid. That's a good site. It's the best site out there. The, for uh, for all things related to uh, to the psychedelic experience or to drugs in general, not just not just psychedelics, but you know they've got alcohol and pills, prescription pills. They are all just kind of just chock full of info, as much information as you could possibly want. Especially the more popular a drug is, the more information there is about it. The newer things like the synthetics, there's not that much information about them, but they do have them listed there as well. So do your research first. Know about set and setting before you get involved in this. Chris, you made that mistake with uh, taking DMT at a uh, very uh, inappropriate set and setting yeah, a little while back. Yeah, I had a and it terrifying good. experience with DMT. Now, DMT is a very powerful uh, hallucinogenic substance. Mushrooms can also be very, very powerful. And if you don't know what you're getting into, you do need to, to learn about that first. And set and setting is the most important thing to know is that if you're in a strange place around people you don't know, please do not do psychedelic drugs. Uh, if you are with people who have experienced these drugs previously, who you trust, who you appreciate, who you love, uh, and you're in a place that you're comfortable, there's no better place. Uh, than that place to do something like that Uh, your mindset's also important if you're afraid don't don't do it if you are angry probably not the best uh, mindset to be in you don't want those sensations to be amplified while you're on this particular substance so try to come into it with an open mind with a positive uh, mindset have the intention set the intention in advance that you're going to gain from the experience that you're going to have a positive experience so set and setting doesn't just mean what's outside of you it also means what's uh, what's inside of you all those things are very important so that said we'll continue the discussion here in moments first we've got melissa with us listening in colorado you're on free talk live melissa hi Hi, Melissa. You're I'm not on the air. Sure that great, though. But you're, you're saying I'm what? Dying anyway. I'm sorry. I'm I couldn't sure make out what you said. I know. See the connection is something, isn't it? I think it's something like but, uh, you're trying to unlock true. the car door and she's trying to open it. And oh, go ahead, mm-hmm. Melissa. Lost well, yes, you can hear me. Well, I was listening the other night to um to your talk about uh, the uh, pledge of allegiance and. I thought I heard a really interesting comment. He was the the voice of opposition there, and um, I was really intrigued by your argument. And I think I came to a conclusion about the uh, the nature of that argument. Um, because um, which argument? I'm not real it. clear. Well, Can you recap that? Oh, he. Yeah. See. Well, it's like, um, like for instance, uh, like. You know, you're saying you're giving everyone this disclaimer on psychedelics, right? And I think that the the Pledge of Allegiance is kind of like that. It's like kind of like a disclaimer. It's like you're going to join our little club, you know, and you you have to be all all in, right? I don't know. I don't know if disclaimer would be the right term for that. I I think it would be the exact opposite. It would be a lot of false advertising telling people liberty and justice for all when you get the exact opposite. Well, that's figurative, yeah, because we're not advertising. But, um, so... 
Yeah, and then I was thinking, well, the nature of the argument um, from our side would be like more of a business kind of a side, right? Like for the for the money part of it, right? Where like um, like if you're gonna uh-huh. sell a product, figurative language again, but if you're gonna sell a product, you want a uh, product, uh, whatever I said, um, you want somebody to like pay up front, maybe, right? So like maybe half down, pay half, pay half up front. I'm I'm lost. What does this have to do with the Pledge of Allegiance? This is not a form of brainwashing. I'm a little. I am also very lost. What is it that uh, d- d- is what you're talking about right now? Have well, something okay, to do does. with the Pledge of Allegiance? It does. It does. It does. It, it all does. Because well, because you you, had, and you you were upset because of the nature of the manipulation and the brainwashing, right? It's like you know your indoctrination of children, and mm-hmm. um, that's the that's the one side of it, right? Where's the yeah, money the come in that you were talking that. about? That's what I'm I'm missing the link well, between the money and are, there is a we're, this is a very um, wealthy nation, right? I mean, even though there is social security and welfare, um. You know, then so so there's poor, there's poor people, but it it still is a wealthy nation, and it so that so that's like that was you know I think the nature of the disagreement. Like if you have if you have something real good, you kind of want people to buy in first. Right? Well, I think I think they've to, got you know, something real bad, which is why they're trying to get people to buy in when they're toddlers, right? You, you get them into bad. their schools, and then they're like, hey, you live in America, liberty and freedom for everybody, and you're going to be indoctrinated with this every single morning in our public school, and then you're going to be on board whether they screw you over or not is, is well, I think, yeah, sort of the like problem. It's like an ideal. I mean, if you don't understand it as an ideal, it's like an ideal is something that you aim for. It's like a target that, that never really – you can never really hit the target. But you just aim for it all the time. It's an ideal. It Are you calling to support the Pledge of well. Allegiance? No, I was just saying that the, the nature of, of the disagreement was interesting to me, and I thought about it a lot. Okay. Uh, you've apparently thought about it quite a bit more than me because it's you've gone into yeah. a realm which I have not been able to understand oh, you well, at you all. Oh, well, I really like uh, listening to you guys. Cool. Well, thanks, Melissa. I appreciate the call tonight, and take, I'm sorry I was so. Take a dense. couple of notes. Co- take a couple of notes and call back with that with that thing. I Just think that she tonight. was putting her her thoughts together as she was on the air. That's maybe, what I and, thought. It seemed very disjointed, you know. and I couldn't let it go on much much longer. Right. So, so, but yeah, get some notes together, think it out a little bit more, and give us a call back. Yeah, I think that's an important uh, suggestion. That you know, if you're going to call talk radio. Take a few notes, make a few bullet points on the things you think are important to hit. Oh, and I mentioned one of the reason I mentioned the Silk Road is because one of the administrators, the alleged administrators of the Silk Road, Inigo, has been charged. Uh, the man they're accusing of being Inigo, at least, has been charged criminally. He's facing the rest of his life in prison, and he's a Free State Project participant. His name is Andrew Jones, and you can help him pay for his defense because it's not cheap. Drewsdefense.org is where you can go to do that. I've pitched in some Bitcoin. Drewsdefense.org. More coming up here in moments. It's Free Talk Live. Are you ready to surrender your right to buy body armor? No joke. Congress is now trying to outlaw civilian body armor. And if House Bill H.R. 5344 becomes law, you can kiss your right to protect yourself against rifle bullets goodbye. Don't put off your body armor purchase any longer. Go now to InfidelBodyArmor.com. Thousands of military veterans trust their lives to Infidel Body Armor. You should too. Spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L. Infidel Body Armor. Just won't quit. This is Dan Pillard. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpillard.com. You can't win if you don't enter, and you actually can improve your chances of winning a prize drawing if you wrinkle up your entry blank. 
I'm Holland Cook from survivalspeech.com, and I speak from experience. Why this works? If they'll be spinning the drum before drawing, your entry blank will move around more than, and not adhere to, other perfectly flat entry blanks. And if they don't spin the drum and merely reach into a box full of other perfectly flat entry blanks, many of which are sticking together, yours will feel different to the person reaching in. When you win, act surprised. And if you're looking for work, this is a metaphor. For more tips on sticking out in a world where just too much blends into the blah, 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 hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live. Welcome to the world's most powerful spells by High Priestess Catherine Olds. Now, this is kind of like a lot of those religions where you can just sort of just name yourself whatever you want to, right? <laughs> right, right, exactly. Super wizard. <laughs> <laughs> right there at the top. Wait, one year unconditional money back guarantee. So like if your spell fails over the course of the year. <laughs> oh, the tumor came back. <laughs> Here are the terms. You must give the spell time to work. This time frame is 120 days from the date of purchase. That's <laughs> four, four months. months. A request made. I know you want the lover back after four <laughs> months. <laughs> you must allow for time for a full energy exchange. Sometimes mm. our spells take time. It must not be that powerful. Why can't I upgrade? I mean, she charges $97. Oh, wait, no. no. There's, a, there's a sale that ends tonight right. at midnight. <laughs> Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything. The toll-free number here, 855-450-FREE. Psychedelic mushrooms may be helping people cure depression and anxiety. At least that's the suggestion here in the CNN story that Christopher Cantwell is sharing with us. We'll continue that here in moments. And don't forget, you can visit Chris online at ChristopherCantwell.com. Uh, in fact, you are the host of Some Garbage Podcast, Chris. I sure am, and it's back on iTunes now. Yay. Everybody's been barking at me about that. It's on iTunes and Stitcher, and uh, you can get it on YouTube or somegarbagepodcast.com. Perfect. Oh, I didn't know it had its own website. It does, but just, it, just stay tuned to ChristopherCamwell.com. Some okay. Garbage Podcast, that's there for the RSS feed. When's the next one coming out? You got plans? Whenever, I know you said they're irregular. Whenever the F I feel like it. They are We're going to try to get regular soon, but okay, right now is just whenever the F I feel like it. Modup.net is where you got to go if you need focus and are feeling fatigued and trying to get that extra edge when it counts. Look into modafinil from modup.net. Studies show one in five students use this cognitive enhancer offering multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall so you can get things done. Businessmen around the world are talking about modafinil from modup.net and how it's making the difference in their work and giving them the critical edge they need. At modup.net, they provide only the highest premium quality modafinil with the best potency, so you enjoy significant results. That's why they're the number one sponsor of Reddit's third party nootropic testing project. Now, remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show, and modup.net ships worldwide. It's your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. And don't forget, you get a deep discount by paying with Bitcoin at modup.net. 33% off! And you can make the deal even better by using code FTL to get 10 free tablets with your order. So use code FTL. It's great service at an amazing price. Modup.net. M-O-D-U-P.net. Use code FTL and get those 10 free tablets. Again, that's modup. 
dot net. So we've been, uh, Chris, you've been sharing a story with us from CNN.com. We pretty much hit the, the high points of the piece. The suggestion here being that there's some studies being done that are saying that maybe uh, magic mushrooms, psilocybin can possibly help cure depression, cure anxiety. The uh, not so medical explanation as I understood it was that essentially people with anxiety and depression have too many connections going on in their heads and that the magic mushrooms will disconnect those connections. Yeah, at least temporarily to just to show them that it's like possible to sort of escape those negative thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, the, the other thing that they went into that I that I do want to get into briefly before we move on is that they, they talked about um, it being used to treat other addictions like to smoking or alcohol. Alcoholism. I've um, heard about the alcohol thing. Yeah, and it says uh, the research the new research, however, has always scratched the surface of the brain and its consciousness. The brain is about organizing information and predicting external world, uh, and we think psilocybin disrupts that and makes it more chaotic, says Nutt. People have hallucinations because instead of seeing the world as the brain expects it to be, you see what the brain is doing. This chaos could potentially treat not only depression, but also addictions such as smoking and alcoholism, which were the subject of some of the earliest studies of psychedelics in the 1950s and 60s before laws against the drugs were introduced. Mm. And I think it's interesting to point out that if you look into the history of like Alcoholics Anonymous, one of the first things that the guy who created it was saying was, let's give people hallucinogenic drugs. I mean, before, really? yeah, uh, that, that was at the start of AA is, is give people LSD uh, specifically. He was suggesting far this. out, and then you know AA became NA, and now you you know you can't do mm -hmm. any intoxicants now because you know that's the because it's all bad because they're all the same. Yep. Oh wait, no, exactly. they're not. No, I think it's fascinating. In fact, I remember we've read something similar to this in the past, or at least it sounds very very similar to me. I know I, I mentioned earlier the MDMA studies about uh, curing possibly PTSD, which you know is supposedly incurable. Yeah. Uh, with all the treatments that they have, they they took uh, folks who had tried everything for. PTSD and just weren't making any progress and they gave them MDMA, had one therapy session and it was cured. And they talked about how, you know, back in the 60s or whatever, uh, before all these drugs were outlawed or in the 50s, you know, they, they had begun doing some of this research and they had started to uncover some very interesting stuff. And then it all ground to a halt because it was all prohibited. All the research, once the drugs were banned, they were also banned from the lab. Uh, exactly. Laboratory environments were not allowed to do experiments with these drugs. And now, for some reason, some of them are able to do it. I don't know if they're being done in other countries or you know what the circumstances are. Because the DEA, I don't think, wants to just give carte blanche to people to do research on these things. Because they're going to find out stuff like this. That, hey, these things could be used in positive ways that can help people change their lives for the better. And and the fact that we haven't been able to look into this for the last 40 or 50 years is a real tragedy. I mean, that's a national tragedy. Yeah, it's it's disgusting what's what's happening because I, I do believe that like if you have a Schedule One drug, there are certain conditions under which research can be done, but they're damn near impossible to Yeah, you to basically reach. have to beg the DEA this, for a I, This study, slip. I believe, was done in London mm, is what okay. they're talking about. So in the UK, I mean, uh, you know, which is about to become a little bit smaller, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, in, 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 in Britain, you, you know, mushrooms are illegal there you're not allowed to have them but right. apparently if some scientific people or have some credibility and want to do some research they can inject psilocybin into patients mm. so amazing and i do think it's 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 interesting for me and like i had i had even like entertained this recently like before i saw the story it was mm -hmm. why it really like rang a bell to me i was like maybe i should go like trip out in mushrooms by myself <laughs> for a little while i've been having kind of a tough time and you know and like and then i see the story and i'm like well, it seems like an even better idea now. You know? I support it, man. I mean, I uh, I take them for you know, spiritual purposes, basically, just to kind of enjoy. I don't take them for like some sort of group party thing. In fact, I find that psychedelics like mushrooms and LSD make me not uh, social. You know, I'm not. If I take a half an eighth of uh, mushrooms, I'll, I can still be social. But if I take an eighth of mushrooms, I'm gonna want to go curl up in a ball somewhere and yeah. just, you know, have some uh, shut my eyes and have closed eye visuals and, you know, just kind of go inside myself for a little bit. Yeah, it's not conducive to the most um, the most stimulating of conversations. I think. And you know, no, it's hard to have a conversation when you're having an ego death, which uh, I don't <laughs> know if you've ever experienced that, but I th I think that I have, and it was pretty interesting. Can you describe an ego death? I've never heard that term before. I, for lack of a better term. That's what I would describe it as. Uh, there was one time I took an, I, I think it was like an eighth of mushrooms and had just the most profound, beautiful experience walking through the park here in, in Keene, New Hampshire, and just beautiful colors and wonderful visuals. And came back, uh, went and laid down, and at that point, sort of 
kind of died in my own mind in a way and and essentially had to resuscitate myself almost like uh like my body wasn't dying i don't think or anything like that but but internally my mind we can say with certainty that you weren't dying well right like, literally right i mean i i lived through it um but like it felt like i had disintegrated into nothing basically and that i had to essentially reform myself from that and sort of re, uh, sort of was rebirthed, if you will, on my own volition. I mean, it was it was something I had to like reach for. I felt like had I just let myself go, that I would have died uh, completely. But I, I I felt like I'd kind of come back from that, and it was, it was just a, a pure sheer will of was the, it the scary? Will. <sighs> Not really, but it, it, it felt comforting. You know, to my one, knowledge, there's never hand? been like um like an overdose death from psilocybin. No, it wasn't like that. Right? It wasn't like yeah. that. That's why I described it as an ego death. I right. wasn't in any way. My physical body wasn't harmed, right. but uh, but the personality, me or whatever, just kind of washed out uh, for a moment, went to mm-hmm. nothing, and then I sort of kind of brought myself back uh, from that. Just. Because I'm not done yet here, you know. And did you did you feel like that <laughs> that stuck with you for some period of time afterwards? I think that a psychedelic experience sticks with you. I mean, I think that absolutely these things are life changing experiences. I mean, the first time I did MDMA, I had a I, I finally had some appreciation for nature. I was a young man in my early twenties when I did MDMA for the first time, and I never really cared about nature. It was just like there, you know, trees. Okay, fine. Oh, there's nature out there. But and then I, when I was on MDMA, I really, I really had an appreciation for it. I saw the beauty in it for the first time, and ever since then, you know, I've been. It's been a permanent shift for me. So that's interesting. Yeah, I, I, I've done like I did a lot of drugs when I was younger, and I don't think I appreciate the appreciated them at the time. Yeah. You know, and like I said, like when I did mushrooms in 2013, I hadn't done them for upwards of a decade. You know, previously, totally and different like, experience. Totally huh? different experience that I had, you know, not done anything like that in a long time, and I was more mature and able to appreciate it much differently. And yeah. I, and I, I thought I thought that that was a profound experience. Meanwhile, when I was taking acid and smoking PCP all the time <laughs> in my teens and early 20s, like I was just like, ah, we're a drug addict, let's go. You F know? it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so more coming up here in moments. Yeah, I'm, I'm grateful that I didn't do drugs as a teenager like that. I smoked some pot, but besides that, pot and alcohol. Uh, I think that uh, having some maturity along with drugs like this, psychedelic drugs, is, is a good thing. 855 450 free. There's more time here. Enough time for you with your thoughts. Tell your story. This is Free Talk Live. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, Mark, at freetalklive.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. My name's Bruno. I'm 52 years old. I've tried different protein powders over the years, and they've all tasted pretty bad. I tried One World Whey and found it to be delicious. After 10 weeks on One World Whey, my wife commented, you have more muscles and you're leaner than when you were 20 years old. My body has changed dramatically. I'm a cyclist. Normally, I'll ride two days on and take two days off. After being on One World Whey, I rode 10 days in a row in over 100-degree heat, and then I take another two servings of One World Whey and then work out at the gym for another hour and a half. I just couldn't believe these results. My normal muscle tightness and soreness after working out are virtually gone. Don't take my word for it. One World Way comes in single servings. Just give it a try. One World Way is derived from Amish, grass-pastured cows and is newly reformulated to be higher in protein. Call 888-988-3325. That's 888-988-3325. Or visit OneWorldWay.com. That's OneWorld, W-H-E-Y.com. 
Listen, you've heard the commercials before. Whether you owe $15,000 or $15 million in tax debt to the IRS or state, we can help. On a never-ending payment plan? Penalties and interest killing you? Missing tax returns? Being garnished or levied? Not a problem. If you qualify, we can remove levies and garnishments within days or even hours of hiring our firm. If you've been summonsed, or even worse, receiving tax warrants in the mail, call right now. Are you a business owner with back payroll taxes? Is the IRS or state threatening to close your business you've worked so hard to build? Protect yourself and your business. Even if you've tried in the past, new guidelines could potentially qualify you today. So what are you waiting for? We can take that tax monkey off your back. Call the tax monkey now. 800-281-6030. 800-281-6030. 800-281-6030. 800-281-6030. That's 800-281-6030. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Ladies, with a U.S. divorce rate near 30% in this job market, looks matter. Breast enhancement or reduction. A tummy tuck or a little lipo can work wonders on you and your confidence. With hospital rates at fractions of U.S. prices, and thanks to the recent Thai coup, unheard of low airfare and jaw-dropping deals on luxury hotel rooms. Provide a little info. Get a quote. Hit us up at asiarunlikehellguide.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. Moments remain here. Enough time for you to dial in here toll free at 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. We're talking about the psychedelic experience and how it is that because um, entheogens like mushrooms and... What's that word? Entheogen. It's my favorite word. I like that term instead of psychedelic because psychedelic kind of has the baggage of all the people having bad trips and all the scary stories that people have been told over the years. Hallucinogenic is also kind of one of those words that has... Yeah, I say hallucinogens. Yeah. Uh, and, and entheogen is sort of the root word there in the, uh, theo, I think is the sort of the god inside, I think is what it stands for. I think entheogen meaning... I think you told me this The god before, inside. But like it's bringing you closer to God. Uh, that's why I say I take these things for spiritual uh, reasons. And uh, so we were talking about how some of these drugs like uh, psychedelic mushrooms may actually help cure people of depression and anxiety, which is very exciting. We can continue that discussion here in moments, but let's go first to the phones and the fun. Mark, listening in Florida, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Chris. Yeah, hi. Uh, I just wanted to talk about the Free State Project. I was sure. uh, me, and, me and my wife were kind of looking into doing it Great. in a few years uh, when my uh, kids go to college, you know, when they get old enough and maybe we could move. Good but, plan. Uh, part of the criticism I have of it and. uh is it doesn't seem to be focused to me, at least just from what I see and from what listens to your show. It's like if if everybody was on one big topic all together, for example, if everybody said, let's join the Free Straight Project and let's nobody pay property taxes, hmm. then I think that would make a big impact. But now the way I see it, and I'm not, I don't mean to be critical of it, but I see a group of people doing uh, Robin Hooding and people going to court and you know, people. Some people taking a traffic ticket to court, and some people maybe not paying federal taxes. And I don't see that organization of. I think it would have a stronger impact. Well, if what, everybody that signed. The way the way the way the, the the way I I'd, I'd respond to that is is that look, I mean, we're we're coming here for people to be free. It wouldn't make a great deal of sense for us to have a central plan, right? I mean, the the idea here is basically, it, people have different ideas on what it is that they think is going to make them the most happy, what's going to be most effective 
towards uh, ridding ourselves of the state. People have different issues that they find important, whether it's education, homeschool, drug legalization, gun rights. Right. I mean, when we're talking about liberty, I mean, there's really like, it. you know, the government has gotten involved in so many aspects of our lives that like people are going to strike out at the ones that make them the most uncomfortable, I think. And that's that's sort of to be expected. And hopefully, you know, if we if we hit the if we hit 20,000 signers and get however many people are going to move here, then, you know, you will find yourself with a large enough group of people who want to do what it is that you want to do. But I'll tell you what, if, you know, if Free State Project Inc. tried to tell me what to do, I'd tell them to shove it. And I think yeah. a lot of other people would, too. So let me here's my response, Mark, uh, as somebody who's been involved in this movement for a number of years. There's this term called herding cats. Uh, and it's it's a it's in reference to dealing with libertarians and attempting to organize libertarians. It's a real difficult challenge to try to get a a group of liberty minded folks to all agree on the same uh, approach, the same tactic, the same issue. And it's hard enough to find twenty thousand people who are willing to uproot their lives and move to the same place. That on its own is hard enough to just have this general statement about, hey, you should move here with other people who love freedom and then do whatever you feel is right. It would be be even more difficult if the project was you should move to New Hampshire and then buy property and not pay property tax, right? So then you're whittling down the group of potential prospects to the group of people who can afford to buy property who can have the property owned outright because you can't not pay taxes on property until you don't have a bank loan on that property. So you're, you're talking about even amongst property, so-called owners, you're only talking about 1% or 2% that actually own their property as opposed to the bank owning the property. And then of those one to 2%, you'd have to find the ones who are willing to put their property on the line and take the supreme risk of losing their property in order to make a stand for freedom. Uh, now, that's not to say those people aren't here in New Hampshire. I think some of those people are here in New Hampshire. But to to make that to make one thing the thrust of the Free State Project would make it a failure because you wouldn't be able to find enough people to to come on board. So I think that the decentralization of the members in this movement or the participants in the Free State Project is is its strength because people can do what they feel is important when they get here. They're not there's no one who's in charge. There's no, I don't check in with the Free State Project board to ask them for their march orders for this week. I don't care what they think or what they, you know, because I know some of the people on the board don't like some of the activism going on up here. And you named a few of the things that have happened, but you also didn't name the dozens of free staters who've been elected uh, to various different places across New Hampshire. The political action that's going on here, like the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance, an organization that uh, that actually reads the legislation and then rates it based on whether or not it's pro-freedom. And then they rate all the legislators on whether or not they voted in the pro-freedom method on various different legislation so there's really a whole lot happening here there's more happening than any one person could possibly be involved in and i think to to try to centralize it to try to centrally plan it would would ultimately doom it to failure well yeah see i i disagree though because i think like let's say you got five thousand people to say okay five thousand people anybody gets any sort of traffic ticket any sort of whatever you know uh, uh illegal left turn whatever don't everybody take it to court. So if you got 5,000 people committed to that versus 20,000 people committed to various things, I think that that's, those 5,000 people would make a much stronger impact. No one is stopping you from doing that, by the way. There's no reason why you can't create some sort of sub-project uh, within the Free State Project to do that. But I, I, my perspective is why wait? I'm not going to wait until 5,000 other people say, yeah, I'll take a traffic ticket to court. I'm just taking my traffic tickets to court. My viewpoint is I'm going to lead by example. I'm going to show people the way. I'm going to bring a video camera into court. By the way, I'm going to court tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to have a camera there, and there's going to be probably Derek J. is going to be there with his camera. So, you know, we show people what it's like when you do this to make it so it's more realistic so people can understand what the possible consequences are, how it's not as scary to do this stuff as it might seem to be. Uh, had I waited until 5,000 other people were willing to do that together, it would have been you know, fruitless. I don't think anything ever would have come out of it. I say start now and jump in with both feet forward. I, I would also point out that, I mean, there are certain things like, look, there are people who think that uh, you know political action is the answer. And, and Ian brought up um, the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance. There's Merrimack Valley Porcupines. There are people who are organizing around certain ideals. You know, Free Keen sort of came together around, you know, civil disobedience and fighting things in court and, you know, putting forth a lot of ideas and encouraging 
um, a, a great number of different activities, and people have come and decided which of those activities they want to get involved in. I mean, there's all sorts of groups and subfactions and different people working towards different ends here. And, uh, you know, we've we've got 15 or 1,600 people have already moved here. So for mm-hmm. us to get 5,000 people to do anything, we've got to get a lot more than 1,600 people to move here. But I think I, I, the other thing, one one last thing I'll say to it is I, especially now with the 15 or 1,600 people who have moved, these are, uh, you know, early movers, trailblazers, if you will, whatever, you know, in large part. I don't know mm-hmm. where we cut off the early mover you know, thing, but everyone's an early mover if they move before twenty thousand. Okay, so I'm an early mover. You know, some of these people are a little bit more, um, I, I don't know, leaders, if you will. Right? Sure. They're going to be a lot more um, motivated to do things on their own rather than to follow another leader. Perhaps after we hit the twenty thousand signers and get the people to move here, you get more people who are willing to follow somebody else, and I think that that'll be a really positive influence. Yeah. So I would say start your project up here. You know, if you want to do get everybody go get a traffic ticket and then take it to court. So sort of thing and yeah, i'll sign on for it but i've already done that so it's easy for me to say i would do that uh, but i think that if you're going to find the people who are willing to do things like that new hampshire is going to be the place where you're more likely to find people who are willing to sign on and jump on board with your program and in fact that's one thing i have seen here is that whether it's free staters or new hampshire natives whoever we're talking about just the liberty movement in general in new hampshire is very strong and uh and for for someone who is a leader type someone who's willing to sort of put it out there and throw their idea out and say, hey, this is what I think is a good idea. Anybody else agree? You'll see people stepping up if they agree, and they'll say, yeah, I like that. I'm, I'm willing to help you with that. Yeah, good um, luck doing that in New York. Or, right. You know. right. Or in Florida, where you're calling Florida. from, Mark. Oh, I know. Yeah, it's terrible down here. But, I, I mean, I agree. I agree. I'm not, I'm not trying to criticize it, like, but I just, I just wish it was more focused. That's just the way I look at it. I'm not saying I'm still not going to do it, but I'm just I, I just wish there was more of a focus, and maybe it, maybe there will be at some point. But just onto your, uh, I just had a minor uh, correction on your uh, thing with property taxes. Mm-hmm. You you own your property, even if there's a mortgage on it. There's a lien on your property, so you don't have to pay your property taxes. Uh, you, you do, don't. you do, because the mortgage, no, 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 no. the lot, terms of the mortgage. A lot of people have them escrowed. You don't have to have it escrowed. You cannot have it escrowed. That's the bank is not going to let you not pay your property if taxes. You have the a bank mortgage, will come get it before the government does. The terms are in the mortgage. When you sign, normally, you know, normally if you buy a house outright with cash, you're not agreeing to pay property tax then. But if you buy a house right. with a mortgage, it's in the terms of the mortgage that you have to obey the laws, and that includes uh, the paying property taxes. I wish it weren't that way, but but it is. I thank you, Mark, for the call tonight. I uh, appreciate hearing from you. We are out of time. I mean, I wish that you could not pay property taxes while you had a bank loan, but that ain't gonna, it's just not going to work out. See you tomorrow night, freetalklive.com. Are you... Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at FPP.cc, as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at FPPradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to MyMagicMud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin. MyMagicMud.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. 
It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. The latest episode of Cop Block Radio is next, after the news, on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, September 17th, 2014. Silver is trading at $18.68 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,237 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $463. Antiwar.com reports, Iraqi Prime Minister Haider Abadi seems to be taking his promises of a broad coalition surprisingly seriously with his nominees for defense and interior ministers and fueling growing anger among the entrenched power base. Abadi nominated Jabir Jabiri, a Sunni Arab, as his defense minister. Jabiri is considered a moderate, but including a Sunni in such a high-profile position would greatly improve the chances of courting Sunni tribes to back military operations against the Islamic State. Interior Ministry nominee Riyad al-Gharib did not do much better, even though he is a member of the ruling's 